Welcome to the eighth and final episode of the second season of Knights of Everflame. I am Jason Bullman, your host and GM for this adventure. Is everyone ready to play? Yes! yes. yes. Let's yes. go! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> when we last left our intrepid band of adventurers, you were in a small community of halflings uh, called Undervale. There you are with Landry Tethertime, who had agreed to help you undertake what he described as a suicide mission. You were planning on journeying to Ridwan, the sacred city of Zankuthan in Nadal. He called it a suicide mission because it's not the sort of place that outsiders are allowed to go, and any slip up there could mean your death. Determined to do so, he reluctantly agreed to let you go. But he wasn't going to let you go without giving you the best chance he could. Uh, introducing you to Drame Gloomberry, uh, the halfling seamstress that worked with the, uh, the Bellflower Network in Undervale. Uh, you were decked out in costumes, basically, outfits. The clothing of the clergy of Zan Kuthan. Um, they outfitted you as best they could. They gave you a pair of holy symbols. They gave you a holy book. And they agreed to help you escape the Umbral Basin and make your way down to the city as safely as possible. You gathered up all your belongings and set out at once. The journey out of the Umbral Basin was safe, thanks to your guide. And from there, you made your way down into the Weeping Fields, the area around Ridwan, uh, filled with spires of jagged rock, poisonous gas, and uh, few... Uh, predators or vegetation. Exploring this wretched place, you uh, had to camp and unfortunately had to do so near a uh, vent of noxious gas. This led to you having a rather bad night of sleep, but the next morning you pushed on and made your way to the outskirts of the city. The one thing you didn't have was an invitation, uh, a piece of paper, a slip allowing you entrance to the city of Ridwan during this holy festival. The Church of Zan Kuthan is incredibly lawful, and they follow those laws, well, religiously. Hmm. And, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, without that invite, you are almost certainly not to be allowed entrance. So you began looking for someone from whom you could take an invite. Down on the road north of the town, you found a priest of Zan Kuthan making his way to Ridwan on the backs of servants. In, it, almost literally, his palaquin was built into their flesh. And uh, the uh, uh, ostentatious priest was crying out at them uh, to go faster. He didn't want to miss that evening's pain sermons. Lord Mo was stopped by the Knights of Everflame, who were at that point in time pretending to be guards. And uh, upon retrieving uh, his paperwork to show to the guards, the rest of the group sprung into action and ambushed them. It was a, well, I would call it a fierce battle, but it was actually a bit of a, a, bit of a mess. Uh, the uh, Lord uh, was killed immediately by a single arrow from Lys's bow, uh, pinning him uh, through the neck to his palaquin. Uh, <laughs> Tariel ended up doing battle uh, with uh, uh, Scytherus, <laughs> the, uh, the guard captain uh, of, the, of the Lord, uh, while Omelet went up and promptly began cutting down all of the servants, <laughs> flipping over the palanquin, ripping flesh. It turned into w w quite a, a horrific scene, uh, but all the while her new axe kept urging her on. Would you say egging her on? <gasps> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I would I would not. Um, all right. I'm so proud. I love it. Thank you. Cheers. I'm sorry. Oh, you're, you're all terrible. All right. That's it. This is the last episode of the season. All right. Uh, so <laughs> Um, dealing with the, uh, the, the Lord, Lord Mo, you assumed his identity and approached Ridwan. 
there uh, at the gates, you met a uh, someone called Lector Valakas, a very grim, horrific elf who had cut off his own ears and hung them from his own lobes. Um, he, uh, or the tips of his ears, um, he questioned you as you entered the city and did not seem fully satisfied with your answers and assigned Acolyte Kotha to follow you into the city and escort you to the Bone Villa, the place where Lord Mo had made arrangements. Acolyte Kotha led you uh, through the city, questioning your uh, um, excitement, asking you about your uh, fervor for the upcoming baptism in midnight, the holy day of Zankuthan that was now only a few days away. It was an unsettling sight entering this city. The the place is, is, is nightmarish and ghoulish in many ways, uh, torture, and, uh, and sacrifice are a common part of life in everyday Ridwan. And approaching a high holy day, well, there is a certain fervor in the air. You arrived at the Bone Villa, where you met Steward Giuliani, who uh, is the, he's the master of this place and is going to be tending to your every need. However, the veil that you were all under was quickly beginning to run out, and you quickly made your way to your room before it ended. Uh, of, of the group of you, only Linnaeus is not cloaked in this, so only Linnaeus is, is known as she actually is uh, by the steward and uh, the acolyte and everyone else who saw you in town. The next few days went by in a blur. You avoided, uh, via trickery and deception, attending any of their foul rituals. Uh, you've spent time during the day out exploring the town, getting a sense of it, getting a lay of the land. And just this morning, you decided to actually visit the Shadow Flame Cathedral. The place from your vision in the, in the realm of shadow that contains the chain of daggers, one of which is said to hold the soul of Iculus's father. Making your way into the cathedral, you see that it is a large place overlooking the rift, the, the tear in the world that leads to Zan Kuthan's dreaded domain. Making your way upstairs past a number of chain-robed guards, their pale bluish flesh uh, uh, and, and piercing eyes staring out at you, their chains animating and twitching as you move by. Uh, you, you avoided them, but made your way upstairs past the sealed off vault that contains the anvil from your memory and up into the reliquarium, the, the, the museum filled with objects sacred to Zan Kuthan. And there amongst uh, all of the relics surrounded by other nobles, priests and visitors and, and guards, there in the center of the space was the chain a long chain of links forged thousands of years ago to bind the Black Triune. It's links used to create these vile daggers that steal souls. The reforged chain sits before you in a large glass case. The visitors come up and look at it. Many of them offer prayers before going on their way. And that's where we left off staring down at that chain. So that is where we will pick up. The crowd around you continues to move. They go and look at other exhibits. Uh, they offer up prayers. They, they go and uh, look at things and, and look at the, you know, the, the, the implements of pain with kind of a, a gleam in their eyes. Some go and admire the kind of objects of exquisite beauty uh, that also look deadly sharp and dangerous. What do you do? I'd like a really solid layout of this room. Okay. I want to know, like you've pointed, you, you mentioned that there are two entrances, two different doors. Correct. There's the door that we came in. What's going on at the door on the other side of the room? So many of the people who came in the door that you came in are going out that door. Okay. Um, and it looks like they go out that door and go back down. So it looks like you came in through an entrance and that looks like it might be the way out. You don't see very many people going back that way. You went up a spiral staircase. It wasn't a switchback. It was a spiral. Um, so uh, it's kind of hard for those to be two-way staircases So because uh, it's not very big. Are there any windows in this room? There 
are uh, the the two ends have some windows on them. Uh, they are like leaded glass, uh, stained glass windows. They don't look like they open or anything like that. Okay. In the in, and they're they're pretty tall and narrow, um, so they're only like this wide. Are there any naked weapons in the room, like the weapons that are not in? Um, oh no, cases er, er, every, like... everything is in a case. Cool, yeah. that's good. In your vision, they weren't. <clears throat> yeah. I was mostly but... just worried about whether or not the guards were actually carrying any sort of weapon. I'm guessing their chains are very... The the guards don't look like they are carrying weapons. The guards look like they are, are a weapon. Cool, cool. Tight, 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 tight. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So Liz has just been kind of surreptitiously looking around the room the whole time, just sort of like getting a real good feel for for the layout. I think the term is casing the joint. That yeah. would that would be the word. <laughs> Indeed. Nicholas stares at the knife that uh, he recognizes as the knife that's killed his father. I've been chasing petals. And yet it's this. It's what I've truly been going after. All these years, and now it's right in front of my face. We certainly cannot take it now. It would be a very bad idea. We are going to have to come back. I am sorry, friend. I don't think you understand how bad it is that I want to smash this case open. No. I don't understand. You are correct. But I do empathize. We will all die. There are people here, witnesses, gods. As broad daylight as there can be in this place. But if we play our cards right, very soon, and you'll have all of us with you, and less people nearby, more of a chance that we'll actually get to destroy it before someone stops us. We have to be smart. I cannot be selfish, I'm so sorry, I... It is not selfish. It is completely and totally normal. But we should probably move on. We're probably going to start attracting attention if we stand here too long. Best chance of success is later. Puts his hand on where the amulet will be and where George sits. <laughs> Just to himself, he's... Obviously not a allowed. Shellen, I know you're here. I know you've brought me here to succeed in this mission. <sighs> Grant me the peace and the strength. Grant us all the strength. I believe in us. I believe in the Knights of Everflame. Let us go. I want to be keeping a close and sharp eye on everything as we exit the room as well. Before we get too much further into this, I think I'm going to go ahead and give everyone two hero points. Uh, you know, there have been so you many. You don't want to give us three. I mean, the finale. Uh, no, I'm going to give everybody two, but I'm giving <laughs> you an extra one. Aww. 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 Very don't spend them all in one place. I'll try not. To. <laughs> You begin to make your way out of the exhibit and back down the stairs. Um, the stairs eventually deposit you back on the other side of the uh, cathedral space. Um, did the doors have um, anything that looked like a locking mechanism of any kind? Like what kind of opening? Um, it didn't look like they this had doors. It looks like it has a portcullis that goes up and down. Cool. Mm. That undoubtedly has a locking mechanism in it, but you're not sure where it is because you can't see it. Um. So uh, you end up making your way back downstairs and uh, through some of the windows that look out toward the rift, um, you can see the kind of um, spectator areas that are being constructed. They are currently still in the process of building them, but they almost, bleachers is the wrong word, but I mean, it, that's not far off. They're building like viewing uh, stands that look like uh, on either side, they will seat um, hundreds, if not thousands. 
um, total. Um, is, so they're pretty big, um, but you know, I mean, you're probably looking at yeah, maybe 500 on a side or something like that, um, depending on how tightly they pack them in. Um, so they are clearly preparing for this baptism in midnight. Um, and one of the things that they are uh, uh, building is in front of the tear, they are uh, building um, a bit of a platform that reaches right up to it. We have to come up with a plan. If every day is going to be like today, that room is always going to be full of people. So we definitely can't do it during the normal daytime hours. Do we know if the cathedral has been open like ev all day, every day, like 24 hours, or if they've been closing? Um, it's, it's, the cathedral is open until midnight. Um, there is a, there is a bit of a bell tower in town to kind of give people a sense of time. Um, and, and that's been the only thing that's helped kind of write your senses on that. Because when you got here, you actually thought it was, you know, early evening and it turned out it was actually more like almost midnight, um, just because time kind of got away from you and there's no way to tell. Okay. Um, so, uh, the cathedral definitely stays open till midnight, but, uh, it seems like that's when they close it. Um, and then it opens again, uh, the next morning. What I'm thinking is perhaps during this baptism, everyone's outside watching and not inside. Most likely you are correct. I was foolish to think that perhaps we could pull this off before the ceremony. I'm very sorry. It was not foolish, it was hopeful. Mm -hmm. There's a difference in one is very important. Maybe we should get back to the room. Yeah. We have to be very careful going back there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we have a long rope to, uh, to go on over there. No, but no. it's too suspicious if we don't go back. Exactly. Mm. They'll be looking out for... Well, they'd be looking out for you and Lord Mo. Oh. We all need to be on our best bad behavior, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Yes. Maybe I... I, I, I have an idea. What if we delay going back until around the sermon? Of pain? Oh. We don't actually go to it, mm. but we don't come back until after it's finished. That's mm, a great that's a good and then idea. they can't ask us to be a part of it. That's they could true. also, like, yeah. potentially we could be like, oh, we were doing that. Or they can assume that we were doing that. But that way we're not going back too early and your veil does not get wasted. We will have to have scars. Not if we're wearing cloaks. And the veil can, I don't know how far it goes, but... The veil can simulate you looking wounded. Yeah, mm. yeah I could give us some... Illusory scars. They won't ask wounds, a lot of questions so. if it looks like we've done. But yeah, I, I say we kind of putz around a bit before not go back too early. It's a great idea. Yes. It's a great idea. It's a very good idea. So you spend uh, the day, uh, the rest of the day, because by the time you're, you're done with the, the cathedral, you have still like half the day. So you spend more of it getting a lay of the town. You quickly come to realize that there's only really one other entrance into or out of the town that's... Um, um, at least obvious to the public, uh, there is a gate uh, that goes to the west and a gate that goes to the north. Um, ultimately, Malthoon is back to the east. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, but that's, that's the other gate that you find. Um, there are, of course, plenty of places where you can get a, a lunch or something like that, or take in theater, or do other sorts of things here in town. Oh, theater and Ridwan? I'm gonna wait. <laughs> you don't catch any Ridwan plays. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no tanks. I yeah. mean, no. I'm intrigued, but this is not. <laughs> don't want to be in the splash zone. Yeah. <laughs> That's not right. Okay, uh, so. Oh, um, that's not right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you're able to kind of wander around. You get a, a better sense of the town. And, and soon, you know, the hours kind of slip by and uh, it's approaching the end of the day. Um, you hit that point where, uh, you know, uh, the, the pain sermons are and they are at like, you know, it's like eight o'clock or something. So, uh, you can uh, easily wait until after that, keep a low profile, uh, cast the veil, mm -hmm. and make your way back to the uh, Bone Villa. You arrive 
uh, after the uh, sermon has broken up, after the, the pain sermon has broken up, and uh, uh, as you make your way to the front door, um, as, you, as you approach it, the door opens, and uh, the steward is there, um, and she looks um, like she has been punished um, for failing uh, to properly take care of her guests and is looking at all of you quite, um, well, irate is the wrong word, but intensely. You know, just kind of, ah, Lord Mo, I'm glad to see that you have returned. Yes, thank you. Uh, we just uh, returned from the uh, pain ceremony. Uh, she uh, looks at you, and uh, you can tell she's kind of scanning all of you. Can uh, can uh, you give me a deception check, please? All of us? Um, no, she's <laughs> um, really that, yes. Yes. <laughs> she's, she's really focusing on Mo, mm. but yeah. Was that all three of us? Yeah. It sounded no, like it. Oh, okay. Definitely the two of us. Close. Oh. Okay. Um, and the veil. And the veil. Let's love it. Then it's going to be a 26. Um, she sees the kind of blood stains on your garments and, and goes, ah, ah, and suddenly looks kind of confused. Very well. Uh, please come in. I shall uh, ensure that uh, food is delivered to your rooms right away. I am sorry about the... Um, and she says this with some amount of strain in her voice. I'm sorry that the mushrooms somehow uh, ended up in your food. I have uh, disciplined my staff. It shall not happen again. It's not a problem. In fact, I somewhat enjoyed the pain. As she says, nevertheless, it, uh, it uh, obstructed you from your activities. And for that, I apologize. Thank you. You're allowed to go back up to your room. Uh, the uh, steward um, has food delivered um, and uh, is very uh, kind of critical of everything. As everything's delivered, she looks at it to make sure it contains what she expects. And it's like roast beef and, uh, and uh, uh, fresh uh, potatoes and uh, you know she just she looks over everything and checks like the spices and everything to make sure that everything is as it should be. I imagine red vegetables is about all they can manage in this weather. Mm -hmm. If that you're not even sure that this stuff has grown anywhere near here it may all be brought in. Fascinating. I wonder who trades with Nadal. I don't know and well I frankly don't care. Fair. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you're back in your room, you're to yourself, what is your plan? So, unless we want to try to do a stealth operation by night, our best option is probably to wait until the ceremony. I, I agree, agree with them. I agree. Mm -hmm. Ceremony it is. Does it say anything in that book about the, the events of the ceremony? I don't believe so, but I can look again. I also... I bought this and I, I haven't had the opportunity to use it yet and I didn't want to tell anyone in case I was misinterpreted. I didn't know what we were going to get ourselves into, but, and Liz pulls out like a small, like tube of metal that has like these etchings in it, like mm. look like doors and broken locks and stuff. This will unlock doors. Oh. Oh, oh that's massively helpful. That would be incredible. I think that if we're going to break into a cathedral, possibly when nobody else is around, we'll need something that makes as little noise as possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. I bought this because I realized that we're not so good with doors. Mm. And we don't have anybody here with the ability to pick locks. Mm. Yeah. That would be much quieter than the ring of the ram, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Or, yes. or, yeah, or omelette. I was cautioned <laughs> that it is a limited use but I don't think we're going to need it more than it implies. Oh, I only okay. counted two, maybe three doors that we have to worry about. The next three days pass by without much incident, assuming that you stick to the routine that you've been sticking to. Mm -hmm. um, you go out in the morning, come back at night, 
Um, Usually after the pain after ceremony. The pain ceremony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You okay. do get questioned now and again. You run into priests who, you know, uh, 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 shout prayers at you and things like that. But um, the place is so busy right now that it's kind of easy to just kind of get lost in the crowd. There are a lot of people in town. This 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 town doesn't look like it normally has this many people. Although it was, it does look like it's been built to hold about this many, right? But it's it's at capacity. Um, so uh, the days kind of roll by. Um, unless there's anything anybody wants to do, we will jump straight to the uh, evening of. I'd like to solidify a plan. So obviously we have to go to this ceremony mm-hmm. along with everyone. Mm-hmm. Go to the ceremony along with sure. everyone else. Mm-hmm. Make our Join the line. Yes. 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 Enter the queue. Yes. But everybody is going to be outside. We don't know for a fact that there won't be anyone inside the cathedral. There may have to be some level of subterfuge. Are they for sure going to be outside? We don't know. That's, what, that's what all the platforms are for, I imagine. Oh, yeah. viewing it's platforms. It's very likely that they'll be out there. I, I don't know much about religious ceremonies. So just continue. Totally so I'm just I'm just supposing. Do we want to go early, or I think, I think we should we arrive should show up with everyone everybody else. else does. Easy to hide in a crowd, but mm-hmm. there is that one platform that goes out quite a ways. It's probably dangerous, but if we could find a way to sabotage that until a, a, at a specific moment, create a distraction. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Are you referring to the platform that the leans one. out over the yes. chasm? Yeah. Getting to that might Getting to that would be incredibly dangerous. I can make us all invisible for ten minutes. Which will get us at least in the front door. The cathedral. But if we are in I guess I I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just trying to figure out where everyone's going to be. So if we can get into the cathedral and then everyone leaves the cathedral and then we just stay in the cathedral because I don't know where the ceremony's yeah. starting. You know? Uh, in the Three or the three days that we've been kind of just wandering around, have we been gleaning information about what exactly the ceremony entails? You, you've come to realize that um, looking at the book, talking to uh, people, you know, clandestinely, uh, you know, it, it's really easy to feign ignorance, especially when you, you literally don't know. Um, and uh, you learn that there is a mass uh, that starts at around 10 o'clock mm-hmm. and culminates at midnight. And at that moment, those who have decided that they are going to go through with the baptism step through the rift. Most of them will come back out. Changed, but they will come back out. Um, Not all of them will, and it doesn't necessarily happen immediately. So from midnight onward, the baptism is occurring, and it takes a while. And it's outside. It is outside. Does the mass start inside? Um, the the mass is both inside and outside. Um, that that you saw the pews and everything set up on the inside. It seems like there is both a mass on the inside, and then there's people outside to watch the the transference, the the journey. Mm-hmm. Well, then we are going to place ourselves inside, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as soon as the rift stuff starts happening, we will make sure we're positioned close to the stairs. We have an idea. Yeah. Actually. So we go inside, we make sure we're the first there Mm -hmm. for the baptism in the morning, make sure we get a seat inside. Then as everyone's leaving, I'm sure they have a restroom. We can duck into the restroom, go invisible, make our way to a stair. Mm -hmm. Did I see any facilities? Not really. They're humans, what do they do? Oh, oh, they certainly are. but, but that doesn't mean you didn't see them. It's just that they don't exactly... It's not the sort of place where they put up signs. Um, the, the, the temple is ancient and old. And, and to be honest, facilities in this era is usually, um, you know, a little more than a, a trough or a bucket or something. So, um, wow. oh, there is certainly a place for it somewhere. You just don't know where it is. You kind of went through the main area, went upstairs, came back down. Well, same thing, but with a staircase, perhaps. There was mm-hmm. that hallway that, uh, in which there was the anvil and the forge. If we can figure out a way to make it up there, then we might be in a better position. Mm-hmm. Sure. But so uh, either the least amount of people are. Uh, well, I'm thinking that in the hubbub of people exiting mm-hmm. the mass, 
that might actually be our best chance to go invisible. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to notice. That's what I'm saying, but we might want to just be careful and find a place to hide. Hide yes. in plain sight. Yeah. I mean, there's that many people around, like you say. Just to hide behind, then go invisible, and then we're mm -hmm. good for 10 minutes. As long as no one else sees us go invisible. That's the point. I mm -hmm. will keep my eyes open during the ceremony, and if I see something, I'll point it out. Okay. But worse comes to worse, we don't. I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure, figure it out. out. So, mm -hmm. plan is go in at, at, as soon as we can, as soon mm -hmm. as they allow, are start allowing people in, find a good spot, yes. hang out there. Mm -hmm. Mass starts at 10. We oh. stay there, observe this horrific scenario. And then, as soon as people start drifting outside, we go upstairs. Mm -hmm. And then we deal with whatever is up there. I don't think they will leave that place unguarded. I am just saying. They certainly will not. But we'll we'll be ready. It. All right. The days pass and the event grows closer. You soon find it is the day of. The town is a buzz with excitement. Everyone is uh, almost jubilant for these kind of pain obsessed clerics and followers. It's almost weird to see them all so kind of giddy. Uh, with the upcoming mass and and baptism, um, it uh, it's it's creepy and kind of off putting uh, the 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 amount of spring they have in their step. The day goes by in a bit of a rush with everyone getting ready. There are parties uh, in the afternoon to celebrate those who are planning to take on the baptism and go witness the glory of. Zan Kuthan, um, there are, you know, all sorts of celebrations and, um, soon enough, the bells of the Shadow Flame Cathedral begin to ring. A low kind of solemn dong, 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 signaling that the mass shall begin soon. That's our cue. That's. I imagine we were already there all day waiting. Were they letting people in? No, the, the gate, they were preparing the place. The oh. gates of it closed at noon. Everyone was ushered out, <clears throat> and then uh, it, it's not reopened now till like, it doesn't open again till like eight. No one was camping out like at a Comic Con? <laughs> Um, no, um, there were there were some, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't the sort of thing like where a line starts forming at noon and sure. okay, that's... people there were tense and yeah, no, it's okay. nothing like that. So no sleeper bags, just <laughs> hanging out at a, a cafe or something nearby because mm -hmm. um, Ridwan definitely has cafes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I mean, it, it does have places where you can eat, and you know, I I don't know that I'd call them a cafe, but they have they have taverns and they have restaurants. Yeah, I mean, you know, people have to eat, so um, uh, even evil, wicked people. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you're you're able to kind of hang out, and you're kind of just enjoying uh, your uh, disguise, and uh, or actually, you're not you're not disguised at all. You're away mm -hmm. from the the place, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, as you are uh, standing there at this cafe uh, and the bell has just rung and you're getting up to go to the cathedral, Acolyte Kotha spots you. Oh. She comes up out of the crowd, her hair pulled back intensely, and she's like, oh, oh, I was, I was wondering, hoping that I might see you before tonight's uh, events. Where is, where is Lord... Where is Lord, Lord Mo? Mo? I believe he's already at the temple. I, I must go and meet him. He'll be waiting. Ah, I will, I will be glad to accompany you. Sure, but unfortunately we do not have... He, he has some issues with personal space. Um, it's very odd, but I must ask that you not sit with us. She, she says, well, I was not planning to. I, I, I am to be at the lector's side, as, as, as was agreed upon, but I, I would be happy to accompany you to the cathedral, at least. Sure. I, I hope I can find him. It's... I'm not sure where he's sitting. Ah. Ah, yes. Uh, of course. Uh, she ignores the four of you yep. because you don't, don't, know. don't look like people that she knows. Yep. I've um, also been using distracting shadows this whole time. Hmm. 
And uh, she's like, shall, shall we go then? Sure. Behind my back, I just give them a little. <laughs> a little. <laughs> Let us go. Ah, ah. And, uh, and she walks with you uh, to the cathedral. Well. So I guess we'll find a little alleyway and I guess we'll just have to veil again. But that's going to be the last veil of the day. You will drop while we're in the cathedral. That is not a great idea. We should just stick close to Linnaeus and maybe she oh. Figure out a way to get away. To... No. You don't need to use the veil. We can go in. How long does yours last, the staff one? Just an hour. Well, at least you can make an appearance as more, maybe. Just to sort of establish that you're there and that maybe the rest of us are, you know, in a cage somewhere. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that could work. But I'm gonna have to do it right outside the cathedral. I'm gonna find an alleyway right outside. Sure, maybe that'll be the good way if you can scout out a bathroom or something. Oh yeah, that's a good reason for me to leave, right, as, as the hour's up. Um, find a bathroom when we get there, and then mm -hmm. after. Yes. Yeah. A powder room or something. Some, some something, some, alcohol. Some, find a hidden moment for us. Yes. And I can, I'll send a message. To right. Maybe the Naeus or someone. Sure, that you're coming in. Yes. And I will actually, I, maybe this is where it would be a good idea for me to keep track of Linnaeus. I, I will go, I will follow behind Linnaeus right. and, and. Kind of stalk. Yeah, yeah. act like. All right. Um, so, uh, the two of you are just kind of off on your own now. Uh, uh, Lys is stalking Linnaeus and uh, Acolyte Kotha. Uh, and uh, Tariel, you are assuming the guise of. Lord Mo? Yeah, once I get closer to the uh, cathedral, I'm gonna duck into a shadowy spot and... All right. Um, so... Uh, I do not like the idea of us being separated, but okay. Uh, you, you quickly lose track of each other in the crowds because this place gets very busy, right? I mean, there's a lot of people making their way here, so where each of you is is now a bit of a challenge. Um, but you soon find uh, that you and uh, Linnaeus and L Acolyte Kotha have now arrived uh, at the cathedral. And people are just flowing in, right? You know, uh, it's not really a line because they're just letting everyone in. Mm -hmm. And uh, you soon, I mean, it slows down quite a bit as you get up there as people are, there's lots of people going immediately out to get seats in the uh, stands that have been built. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas it looks like most of the nobles are kind of sticking to the inside. Um, many of the priests and other uh, uh, excited, uh, you know, acolytes and whatnot are going outside. And uh, arriving at the gates, uh, acolyte Kotha is like, oh, I just can't wait for the ceremony to begin tonight. It's going to be exquisite. Very exciting, and can you believe how beautiful this is? Mm, you can feel his presence here. It is, it is with us. It is. It purifies us from the distractions of the flesh and allows us to think purely. Indeed, such pain, such beauty. Mm. Oh, it's the same. Um, give me, I will let you give me either a religion check or a deception <laughs> check. We're gonna go with religion. Yeah, right. <laughs> I ain't got nothing in deception. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's that's a twenty nine. Um, it's as good as I can do. I think she's. I mean, she's eating it up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and she's she she kind of looks around and says, uh, "Well, um, I suppose I should I should let you be off. I I should go find the lector. I oh, I should cool. be at his side. Enjoy tonight. It will be delicious." Mm. She says, uh, uh, may the Midnight Lord be with you. Through pain, may we find him. Mm. And uh, the two of you uh, part ways. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I pop up next to Linnaeus. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that. Did Hello. I to start with you? <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Please hold my hand for just a second. At okay. this, okay. Okay. Lord Mo comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lean to Linnaeus. <laughs> it's Toriel. Oh. So. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's Toriel's voice that comes out of Lord Moe's body, too. <laughs> so, 
Acolyte uh, Kotha is like 30 feet away, but you see her turn around and wave. And then uh, uh, she sees uh, Lord Mo, and give me a deception check. This is just purely based on appearance. Starting shadows. <laughs> You're actually, to be honest, know, short enough that nobody, nobody can see you. But even so. Yeah. Not taking any chances. Uh, 26? Uh, oh, she, tw- 30. Yeah. Sorry, wow. the plus four. Yeah. Uh, uh, Acolyte Kotha sees you and then and then nods and, and, and looks back at you and nods and then goes about her business. <laughs> I'm going to lean into Linnaeus and say, oh, I'm going to go find... Like an alcove or a toilet or something. I'm going to come with you. Okay. Where are well, the others? Well, maybe, maybe not because I'm, I'm, I might have to drop this and come back. Of course, yes. Where, where are the others? They're, they're on the way. Okay. I'm um, going to go inside with this and uh, we're going to find some place to stand that's in the aisle way so that we... Like it's... over to the side near to the stairs? You... No, in an aisle way so that um, if they come in, they can, they can see us. No oh, problem. So you just make yourself solid. obvious. Yes. All right, yeah. In that case, I'm not going to have you roll. By the two of you, by the time two of you get in there, you walk into the place and it's filling up, but you still are able to oh. easily make out your friends. They're right near the entrance, so... Hello. <laughs> How did that go? Oh, it was <laughs> fine, actually. Okay. She was brilliant. Oh, no, I just learned what to say. <laughs> she was brilliant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tariel, um, you uh, wander off to try and find a, a quiet spot. And um, although you do find um, the, the restroom, mm-hmm. uh, the lavatory, um, that is actually not really quiet at all. Nope. There's yeah. a lot of people coming in and out of there constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do find, um, right uh, so there's the the lavatories, mm-hmm. and then uh, at the end of the chapel, you do find like a small shrine, right? I mean, if you've ever been to into an older church, they have like lots of little shrines all mm-hmm. over the place. Um, not not everything in here is dedicated solely to Zan Kuthan. Some of yeah. it is dedicated to like his like. You know, the Black Triune has their own kind of shrine in one area. Not that people worship them as a god, but people give offerings to them and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So you find all the way down at the end, there is a, a shrine uh, in its own kind of little gallery mm-hmm. to these three horse lords that originally struck the deal that bound Nadal to the shadow, right? So there's like three paintings uh, of them, but they're all like hazy and indistinct because no one honestly knows what they look like. Uh, but there are these three darkened forms on horses uh, kind of bound up in chains. Um, and a few people come in here, but it's not really all that busy at all. And you soon find yourself alone. Great. I'm going to drop my disguise. Granted, okay. there's no like guards or anything in there. Nope. Okay. There's no sacred relics or anything in here. There's some paintings, but okay. um, it's, it doesn't look like this is the type of place that, you know, th- this is a temple to Zan Kuthan. There are other things here, but it's not... Mm-hmm. Not the same precedent mm-hmm. level okay. here. Then I'm going to uh, drop my disguise and make my way back. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you've all gathered back together. And, uh, uh, you know, are you trying to find a seat inside or outside? Inside. Inside, inside. inside. near the stairs. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell them of the room. Oh, and near the alcove. I think that mm-hmm. we could probably, as long as we put ourselves nearest to there, we can sit wherever. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think it's very strange for us to go pay tribute to the, to the tree before mm-hmm. heading in. <clears throat> or heading out. Sure. <laughs> I meant heading into the rift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Omelet. Yeah. You got this. And we are here with you. Thanks. As you're saying that, she instinctually just starts fiddling with the rock in her pocket. All right, let's sit down and worship. Mm. Um, to be honest, most people are just sitting waiting for the ceremony to begin, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's not active worship. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's kind of just sitting around waiting for the show to start. It, yeah. On the inside here, it looks mostly like nobles and dignitaries. None of them look like they're signing up to take the plunge, but they're here to see the festival or the the holiday, right, as kind of befitting their station or, you know, being there, you know, to be seen. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of 
what you can only guess are Nidalee's nobility here. And there's a lot of, um, you know, <laughs> not surprisingly, super pale people um, all over the place. Um, people need a touch of melanin. <laughs> yeah, no, they, 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 don't, they don't get any of that. Uh, so, um, you know, you wait around and you've got, you've got some seats that are kind of near one of the stairs. You couldn't get exactly next to them or anything. Uh, but you're kind of off on that side. And soon enough, uh, the time has come. The time has finally arrived. And the high priest uh, of the Shadow Flame Cathedral uh, approaches uh, the stairs to begin his sermon. Or should I say, its sermon. It's hard to tell what it is anymore. Um, it is uh, clad in uh, leather uh, like a leather apron and, and the only places where you can see the pale flesh, it is pierced and, and, and stained in blood. Um, it, uh, <laughs> it has this kind of iron crown thing, uh, attached to its head, um, by spots that clearly are piercing its own skull. Uh, and it speaks through rotten teeth, uh, and begins the litany of prayers to Zan Kuthan. Um, these are, you know, I mean, you saw them in the book, so you were kind of prepared for what they are, but to hear them come out of those lips in this place, uh, adds a whole new light to it. This, this place is bedecked with chains, dangling silver mirrors, all of which seem to reflect, no matter their angle, the darkness that lies in that rift beyond, kind of bringing it in here. And as the sermon progresses, um, you can feel that darkness swell. Um, and it's almost as if the rift outside is starting to pulse, like as if it's waiting. Um, it, it's, it's hard to kind of fully get your, wrap your head around it. And you're not, just, you're not sure if it's just the, the sermon or the place or the mirrors, but it, it almost look like, looks like it's breathing. Um, the way it kind of surges and pulses. Um, with this, the followers of Zan Kuthan are reaching a, a fervored uh, litany in their prayers, many of which have scourges to which they are ablating themselves um, you know, as the, as the sermon goes on. Um, and fortunately, here in with the nobility, it's mostly just nods and you say, you know, praise to the midnight lord when everybody else does it's it's a lot more lip servicey in here mm -hmm. than it is out there where the <laughs> priests and acolytes are that's where it's fervent mm -hmm. sounds about right and uh out around the rift you can see a uh, uh, a whole host of these chained figures uh uh kind of uh, around the rift um, and more than once, they have to stop someone from diving in early. Uh, it's like they're too excited. <laughs> they're, they're, they're too eager. They want to be the first one. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. And they come running out of the stands to dive through the rift and the chains just snake out, wrap up the person, <clears throat> and they take them away. They will not be allowed to partake in the ritual at all now. I don't feel bad for them. No. No. That's good to know that those chains move on their own. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, you get to see them now in action. Like, these figures will move, and although they walk with their feet, the chains help them move faster. <laughs> and as they draw close, they hold up their arms, and the chains just unfurl and wrap forth and grab at people and wrap around them, and they just pull and drag them away. It's like the Dreaders all over again. Hmm. Right. A lot of negative energy here. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way of putting yeah. it. <laughs> so um, this this sermon goes on for almost a full like two hours, and there are there are moments in it where it changes, and there are, are songs and hymns that are sung. All of it's kind of equally grim. I won't belabor <laughs> the point. Um, I hold the hand of whoever is next to me. Mm. We're all holding hands a little bit. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know. I take your hand back. <laughs> the uh, the assembled uh, nobles in here are all kind of, you know, they're just paying attention to the sermon and they're they're enjoying it, but they're they're really here for the show, 
And uh, uh, that moment has kind of finally arrived. The sermon seems to be wrapping up. The high priest um, uh, leaves the altar to go outside. Um, and it, it walks up to the large uh, platform and begins a second, uh, what you can only assume is shorter uh, prayer uh, as acolytes and priests began to line up at the rift. In here, the nobles pretty much just stay seated and are waiting to watch. Oh, mm. okay. There aren't any more seats out there. They're, those are sure. all filled. So the nobles are keeping their seat here. They can see the uh, activities from here. That's why they built the kind of, uh -huh. it's not really a diving board per se, but it is a platform that allows the people inside to be able to see what's going on. Then we're just going to have to move very carefully. Or we just leave one at a time. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I was thinking meet in the black triunes. One of us can go, we count to 35. The next person goes. Everyone's just seated. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while, someone will get up and go use the restroom or something, right? I mean, most people are trying to stay seated. And outside, this doesn't happen. Outside, everybody's too locked in their fervor. But in here, the nobles, yeah, I mean, some of them go and, 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 and use the restroom. Every once in a while, they'll go and get more um, wine because mm -hmm. they, or other refreshment there is, you know, this is where the nobles are. Mm -hmm. If it's you wanted bar. to be here, you can. There is, there is, <laughs> it, it's not quite an open bar, but you can go get some wine. Uh, there's Chain Devil mixing drinks. You're like, what can I get you? Uh, <laughs> Please. Uh, yeah. All right. Then I think that's yeah, it. Man. Mm -hmm. One by one, we kind of just drift off towards <laughs> that um, alcove. What do you want? We only serve Bloody Marys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want, you can slowly one by one siphon off and, and make your way to the altar of the, the Black Triune. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Who first? Doesn't matter. Let's just go. I can go first and then send a message. Hmm. Perfect. I can do that. I can let everyone know when it's safe. Okay. So as each one of you makes your way there, you, you got a couple <laughs> different options as to how you can just like go there. You can just be like, yep, I just get up and go. That's fine. You can just say that. That's what mm -hmm. you do. You can also say, you know what? I'm going to try and make myself nonchalant as I make my way there. I don't, I don't want people to know that I'm going. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be unseen as I make my way there. That would be a stealth check. Um, you can also try and play it off as if, you know, um, you, you, you are lost or misplaced and end up there accidentally. That's going to be uh, either a deception or perform check. Those are the checks you can make. I need to know which one you're going to do when you're trying to make your way there. Uh, and as I said, you can also just be like, nope, I just get up and go there. What do you do? And who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. I'll just, uh, I'll, I, I want to play it kind of nonchalant, but okay. it's also just like, I know where I'm going. You know, just like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom now. Okay. So what role would that be? Uh, yeah, give me a perform check. I can do that. I figured as much. I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> Come on. Is this a news night? Twenty-two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I I just wanted to know the result. What's the who's going next? Uh, I will go next. Sure. Okay. I am definitely going to use my stealthing abilities to, yeah. Okay, you try and go there quietly without being really noticed. Give me a stealth check. With the least stealthiest die I own. Hey! Oh, um, that is going to be a 34. <laughs> okay, great. Who's next? I'll go. All right. I'm going to pretend I'm a little lost. Okay. I'm gonna get those back nice and quick. Okay. Um, it's gonna be a 29. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> it's just, I've scooted over in the pew to get closer to Linnaeus, just like giving the eyes of, you next, me next, you next, me next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look around and see if there are any empty, empty wine glasses on the floor, if, if the nobles have put them by their feet. Um, uh, you uh, look down and yeah, sure. I mean, there's one a little, a little ways away. 
Okay. I mean, there isn't one near the group of you because you didn't get any yes. wine. Yes, I want to sneak over. It's very slowly. Okay. Inch, inch, inch. Set it under my feet. Inch, 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 inch back. Um, give me a... Oh, God. <laughs> God, I don't even know. Uh, give me an acrobatics check not to tip it over. Okay, okay. All right, that's, you know, you know. I'm gonna roll a perception oh, check. That's all right, that's good, that's okay. You know, that's one of the best things that you could have rolled. Thank you. We had the talk, you were okay. what you got? 26. Okay. okay. The noble next to you doesn't seem to notice. Okay, <laughs> um. That's a good idea, go get some Okay, wine. I'm going to pick it up, holding my empty wine glass. Head meanderingly over, just go in there. With the empty wine glass, pretending I'm going to get wine. From the shrine where the wine isn't. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um, now that I'm alone. Oh, no. In my lap, I just want to hold the rock and look down. Mm-hmm. And she's closing her eyes. Gives it a peek. She's just looking for any sort of movement. At first, you just see a rock. But then, for just a moment, the smoke and the stone kind of clears up a bit. And you see a single dwarf, dwarven woman staring back at you. Clasp my hand around it. Do I have it all left? Shove it in my pocket. Then just leave. <laughs> so you just get up and go. I owe these people nothing. All right. So uh, Omelette arrives in the uh, uh, chamber. What do you do? All right. Doing From the chamber, how far is it to the stairs that go up? Oh, about 60 feet. Cool. And there are people out there, so it's going to be a little tricky. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Oh, we could all be invisible. Well, that's what I mean. It's like together. Yes, we can do that. <laughs> but I'm just saying that we have to be very careful about the space. Yes, mm -hmm. we have to be very stealthy. But we also have to fit in a 10-foot burst. Here we, we go. It. We've done it before. We've done it before. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to get everyone to fit in a 10-foot burst. It's it's more tricky to get them all to stay that close together. Yeah, we can do it. Are we okay. ready, everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We are only retrieving the chain. We are not going to try to do anything to free the souls here. We need sunlight. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... Obviously, we can try, but if it doesn't work, we have to bug out. Yep. All right, are you yep. ready? Let's go. Okay, I cast invisibil Invisibility Sphere. Okay, you cast it, and just as everyone fades from view, a nobleman peeks his head into this room and kind of looks around, looking confused. And he looks, shakes his head, and heads back out. Now we do the creep. Okay. <laughs> the Scooby-Doo creep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the, the thing you have going for you, I mean, obviously, other than being invisible, um, is you also have the fact that there's a fair amount of noise uh, in here. So um, this will be a stealth check. Um, I will allow you to do follow the leader and... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, quiet allies. Quiet allies, or follow the expert and quiet allies. Um, so uh, your bonus is going to be a seven now, mm -hmm. not six, because you're seventh level now. Um, uh, seven plus, 17 plus seven, so uh, 24. You make it to the stairs. Whew, up we go. You had to kind of avoid a group of nobles making their way to the bathroom. 
and uh, there was a priest uh, who came inside kind of excitedly being like, it's about to begin, it's about to begin! Uh, and uh, But you, you managed to avoid kind of their ruckus and eventually made your way to the stairs. All right, so you're at the base of these stairs. You know that it goes up two, two whole floor. It's more than floors. Calling them floors belays how high they actually are. Mm -hmm. To get to the next floor up, you actually have to go up like three full rotations to get up to the second floor, but it's gotta be like 30 feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. And then another two full rotations to get up to the floor above that. Mm -hmm. So um, you have like five flights of stairs to run up. Um, you can do that while invisible as long as you all stay together and you can't go very fast. How many minutes does that last? 10. Oh. 10. Oh, wow. Well. It's gonna be stretching it. Um, Fortunately for us. As soon as we get above them, it might be a little bit easier not to be seen. Mm -hmm. Also, if it ends on the stairs and no one else is around, I can just cast it again. Mm. Okay. So you begin making your way up the stairs and eventually you reach the, the level, the next level up where the gate is once again closed. Inside you can see the anvil and the forge, but that is all locked up. And it is, uh, although the forge is still lit, um, it is otherwise dark in there. Okay, let's keep going. That's not our target. No. no, I wish we could blow that whole place up. Me too. You continue making your way up the stairs and eventually you find yourself at the entranceway to the reliquarium. The gate is closed. There is a lock mechanism on it. It is rather ornate. I want to take a quick look really fast to see if I notice anything out of the ordinary, any kind of trip wires, Trapped. any kind of mm -hmm. like latches, Anything like that. What's your uh, perception bonus? Uh, it's plus 18. Plus 18. All right. Um, you take a uh, good look around. You do notice um, along one edge, there is some sort of mechanism attached to the gate. Um, you're not sure what it is. It doesn't look like something that's magic, but... Um, it definitely looks like it's designed to uh, trigger a switch or something when the gate is opened. Okay. Mm. Does there appear to be any way to deactivate it? If do any are any of you trained in thievery? Mm. I'm not, but uh, if I use my chime, I'm you trained. Can make plus no, oh, I just you are. Plus. Mm. I am trained in thievery. You are. <laughs> I don't. Yes. Okay. It's good to know. <laughs> She had to sneak out of the house a bunch. Yeah. Well, I that know, yeah. her family that's, used to lock a lot of that, doors. That is how you pick locks, and that is also how you disable a device. Is the trap on the inside of the gate? The trap looks like, whatever it is, looks like it is activated by the act of opening the gate. Mm -hmm. mm. So it is part of like the gate rail mechanism. The gate looks like it raises up. Yeah. So there's a, like a locking mechanism that holds it in place. Right, so there's like a lock on one side of it that locks the gate into the wall. If that were disengaged, you could lift the gate up. Mm. However, on the other side, there's some other like, and you can just barely see it set into the rail where when the crossbar gets across it, it looks like it would trip something. You have no idea how that's turned on or off. It's probably not out here. It's probably mm -hmm. somewhere else. So try unlocking it first. Ding. Okay. That is fine. Go ahead and give me a check with a plus 13 bonus as you use the chime of opening. Oh, that's going to be a 30. Uh, you hear a click <gasps> as the lock unlatches. <laughs> I rolled a natural 17. Yes! <laughs> All right. Okay. Now... Lifting this is the part that could get really hairy. No, so I'm going to lift it and she's just going to disarm it. You can do this. All right, so you can pick it from outside. You don't need to be inside, but do you have oh, a set okay. of thieves tools? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you're full of surprises today. <laughs> um, so uh, you can attempt this check. Uh -huh. You do know that if you fail this check by a lot, you will set it off. So no pressure. No pressure. 
So remember the days of kind of sneaking out. That is 26. 26. Hold my hand. Click. <gasps> you think you've disarmed it. Okay. Is that Can I it? Take one more look at it. I, I, you're looking at it right now. You're like, you think she's disarmed it. Okay. There's only one way to find out, though, and that's to open it. It's All right. right. To do. All right. We're gonna open the door. Get ready to run if it goes off. Let's go. Everybody, uh-huh. together. We take the damage. Come on. Come on. Two, three. <gasps> it's noisy. Like this thing is not a quiet gate when you raise it up. However, you don't trigger the full building-wide alarm, so that's good, uh, because the trap does not go off. Oh! Okay. Should we, like, let's just go in. inside and let's go, go in, go, go, let's go, go in. Okay, okay, okay. You make your way uh, into the reliquarium. Everything is still here. It's all in its cases. It's just quiet. No guards? You don't see any. The place was locked up tight. It looked like all of those chain guards are down at the, uh, if you still want to down at the, the gate, door, or the, the let's crack. Let's go. We have very little time. All right. Do you want to try this or should I? Um. You approach the case. It's a large glass case. There's a lock on one side that looks like it would uh, open uh, one side of the case. It doesn't look like it opens the top because okay. this thing is kind of big. Mm. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's kind of big and, and bulky, um, but um, that that's what you see. Um, uh, so it looks like the case would open up one side of it that then they could access it from the side because it's kind of a large flat display mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. How about you open it and I'll have my bag of holding open and we can just shove it all in there. Sounds good to me. Does that sound good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> this is fine. This is fine. This is very fine. <laughs> Nineteen plus thirteen. 30. Lock. A thirty-two. Opens. No alarm. No nothing. I just said the lock opens. That's okay. it. Do you open the case? Tario. Am I opening it? <laughs> you know what, Achilles? Okay. Achilles puts his hand on his. I mean it. Shall and guide our way. You've brought me here. It's the moment of truth. Father. You guided me for so many years. I followed a path that I uh, wasn't intending on taking. Somehow it led me back to you in a very grim way. But I know that this is what you want from me so that I can release you from this evil place. By the grace of Shellen. Nicholas raises the, king, the case mm -hmm. or the latch on the door. Opens it. You grab hold of the chain and it is cold. And with each link, when instead of the links kind of clinking against one another, whenever they hit, you almost hear like echoes of moans. <laughs> the souls of hundreds trapped within. They cry out as the chain is loaded into the bag. And it is unfortunately that noise that distracts all of you from the other chains that are slowly dropping from the ceiling. Mother bitch. As <laughs> dropping from up above is one of these chain things. Mm. 
it descends, wrapped in all of its glorious chains, and you can hear it cry out in a cold, dark voice, Who are you who dares to touch the sacred relics of Zad Kuthan? And at that, I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative, please. Battle cry. Okay. Oh yeah, scout's warning. <laughs> finally get to use that. So. <laughs> Which is okay. plus one. Yes. It's okay. been a while. Okay. I know. Okay. We've not okay. been in situations oh. where it was necessary. Just, but just to be okay. clear, the chain is in the bag now, right? You've got it like half in the bag right now. You are feeding it in because you have to be real it's careful with the yeah. blades not to cut the bag because oh, you might yeah. destroy it. Damn it. Yes. Yeah. Boof. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh no. That's way up there. Oh, um, what do you got? 20. Tario, what do you got? 23. Linnaeus, what do you got? 27. Iculus, what do you got? 17. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As always. I do have the battle cry. Listen. 24. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me that battle cry. The intimidate check, please. Um. 24. Not enough. Um, you cry out, but in this place sacred to its deity's unholy power, this museum curator <gasps> is unaffected. And it gets to go first. Oh, no. uh, by the time you saw it, it was already only 10 feet above you. It's being lowered from the ceiling by its own chains. Um, what you see is a, is a withered man uh, whose body is wrapped in these chains. And as you get a look at him, you realize that he is covered in burns. He may in fact be the thing that bound these chains. His hands are wrecked and ruined from flames. <gasps> Smith. He's still alive. Sacre bleu. <laughs> Invaders. The first thing he is going to do. Oh my god. I love you all. I love, I love you too. too. Is strike out with the chain at Iculus. Mm. Oh, makes sense. He's torching it. Armor class 37. <gasps> hit, not a crit. <gasps> Mm. Oh, butts! Thirty-seven. Butts is the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take twenty-three points of damage. <sighs> you also have one d six persistent bleed at the start of your turn. You will bleed for one d six points of damage that you may roll every round. At the end of the round, you may make a check to overcome that. Okay. With his second and third action, his chains dance around menacingly as his hands move. And Toriel, you are holding the bag. Mm -hmm. I need you to make me a will save as your body begins to go rigid. A 26 will succeed. <sighs> On a success, you are stunned one, which means you lose one action on your next turn. Okay. <laughs> Just on my next turn? Yep. Okay. That will be the end of my actions <laughs> for the moment. For the Linnaeus. Moment. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Choose good energy. Okay. And use divine wrath. It has a fortitude safe. All right. Uh, 25. Shoot. Let I think it's going to be a success. I think it will as well. Uh, yes. Right. By two points, it is a success. Um, but you still take half damage. All right. Of my 4d10. Uh, 17, so take half of 17. I will take eight. The thing hisses out in pain. You notice when that divine wrath goes off in this place, in like 
two other cases, bad things happen as they were subjected to the good energy. <laughs> you don't know what you've done in here, but you've just made a mess. Oh, um, good Lord. You still have one action left. I do. With one action, can I grab the rest of the chains and shove them in the bag? Uh, you can help, but you will be doing so indelicately and will take damage. Okay. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. The chain itself is about, at this point, it's like 15 feet long. You got about half of it in. Mm -hmm. uh, I will let you do an action to get half of that in. Then somebody else can do another action to throw the other half of it in. Mm -hmm. uh, but you will take some damage from the daggers. And we'll just go ahead and call that nine points of damage. Okay. As you are like cut and serrated for multiple uh, daggers. Uh, you hear like moans and wails as you start moving <sighs> it quickly as the chains clink against each other. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> so, so I'm sorry. sorry, I'm sorry. May Saren Ray guide you. <gasps> Liz. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It is currently still 10 feet above you, suspended by the chains that hook through its own flesh. Yep, uh, hunt prey. Yep. Um, quick draw. Yes. Shoot. Hunt prey, quick draw, shoot. Gotcha. Uh, that is going to be uh, uh, 20, 20, wait. Yeah, 22. 22 will miss. Yep, that's what I thought. And then I think I have one more action because quick draw means I can. Correct, yeah, you still have one more shot. Better. Uh, that will be uh, 27. 27, and I'm assuming that's with the penalty. Mm -hmm. That will hit. Yay. <laughs> if we're fighting steel, might as well roll with steel. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven points of damage on that. The uh, arrow pierces its flesh and it hisses, um, but... You're not sure if it's in pain. Um, that is the end of Lissa's turn, <clears throat> Tariel. I'm gonna use my first action to shove the rest of the stuff in the bag. Okay. And I will take whatever. Uh, take eight points of damage from the, from the daggers as they slice away at you as okay. you stuff the rest of the chain in the bag. Good show, girls. Okay, and then um, <laughs> inspire courage. Okay. You have only one action left. That that was two actions. Because I lost an action because I was stunned. Oh, that's right. You were stunned. Oh, yeah. thank you for reminding me. Uh, yeah, so that is the end of your turn. I was trying to be honest. No, I appreciate that. All right, uh, Tariel, that is the end of your turn. Omelette. I reach into my bag, and I, um, for one action, I grab out my potion. All right, that's one. Um, and I drink. My bark skin potion. Okay. I have a feeling this thing's gonna hit really hard. Yeah. Drink it. Um, for a second action, I gain two plus to resist uh, two resistance two to bludgeoning and piercing damage. Okay. Um, and then I. Uh, oh, this guy's definitely doing piercing damage. Okay. <laughs> I go on my back to reach for one of my axes. Okay. Do I need to make a will save? Depends which one you're trying to reach for. I'm reaching for my old one. Give me a will save. Yeah. You hear the sinuous voice in the back of your head. Is it time? I hope it's time. I've been so bored. <clears throat> um. With a 34, I say, you're going to stay bored. And I draw my old axe All right. for my third and final action. All right. Uh, that is the end of Omelette's turn. <gasps> the other axe. You hear it say, damn you. This is my turn to feast. So, Iculus, it's your turn. Uh, smite evil. Okay. And I'm going to draw my short bow. All right. Well, uh, he is up in the air above you. Mm -hmm. And put in one of the magic arrows. The vine arrow? The vine oh. arrow. Cool. Okay. 
forgot about those. Cool. Yeah. We still have some left. That's a that's a that's an old magic <laughs> item. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Call back. That's not gonna do anything. Mm -mm. No, no. But this will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a good thing you gave me three. Oh, you're hoping we can earn more. Mm. 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 Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, that's going to be a uh, sixteen. Oh no, Oof. not even close. Yeah, the arrow goes uh, flying right past the curator and shatters on the ceiling above. Okay, so that's the end of your turn. However, before we're done, uh, let's not forget your bleed damage. Go ahead and take a d6. You can go ahead and roll that. Two. Two, take two points of damage. Now, with any kind of persistent damage, there's a there's a random chance that it might just end at the end of your turn. So go ahead and bounce me a d20 and just tell me what you get. I'm not using you anymore. <laughs> 15. 15. No, you continue to bleed. I should note the moment he gets any magical healing, the bleed will stop. Oh, okay. okay. Good to know. Um, so uh, that is my own. Lay on hands. Yeah, okay. any magical healing. You can also just use medicine to try and make the bleeding stop. Okay. But, you know, not to heal, just to make mm -hmm. the bleeding stop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that is the end of your turn. It is now the curator's turn. The first thing he does is, is kind of hiss and curse. Uh, he just took good damage, so that's not going to work. Uh, and then his chain uh, is going to dart out at Linnaeus. I'm not surprised. Crit. <gasps> oh! Liberating um, step. At least I'm pretty sure it's a crit. Let me just double check. Uh, a 38, I'm assuming, crits you. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Wheeze. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that'll do it. All right. Liberating step, uh, which would allow you to move five feet, but I don't know if that matters because it's okay. above you. No, I want to move five feet away. <laughs> uh, sure. If I um, can. Uh, sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, that might even make it harder for it to hit you from this point forward. Um, this thing is not nice. Mm -mm. No, it's it's evil. Very evil. Uh, 15, 20, take 40 points of damage. Oh my minus, God. minus nine, so it's 31. Ooh. As the chain impales you. <gasps> okay. Um, the impaling of the chain, uh, you are now, you take 1d6 persistent bleed. Okay. And uh, this, you are now grabbed by the chain. This happens at the end of the effect though, so I, I'm not sure it interacts with your uh, liberating step just yet because she wasn't grabbed at the time that the hit occurred. So, um, and uh, you are immobile, anchored to that spot because the chain shoots right through you and into the ground. Okay, but he did shove me five feet back? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's a bit of a stretch for his chain, but it'll do it. Uh, and you cannot, under any circumstances, remove the persistent bleed until that chain is removed. Okay. Magic will not do it. You will still bleed. Yep. Because the chain is going right through you. With its second action, it's going to uh, lash out at uh, Liss. Uh-huh. Uh, it's minus five, so that's only a 32. It'll still hit, but it's not a crit. Okay. Uh, 18 points of damage, and you take a, a D6 bleed as well. Thank you. And with my third and final action, uh, Toriel, who is holding the bag, it's going to be minus 10, so I think that's going to miss. That's uh, that's only going to be a 19. Yeah, that's going to miss. Okay. That is the end of its turn. It laughs maniacally as you see as it sees you dangling uh, from one of its chains that has pierced you. Um, that is the end of its turn. Linnaeus, it is your turn. <clears throat> How do I get this chain out of me? Do I just pull? Yeah, you have to kind of pull it out of the ground and then loop it back through you. It's it's an escape check. You can you can do it via athletics to pull the chain. You can use acro acrobatics to kind of slide back down it. You can use an unarmed strike to beat on it to get it to come loose. I'm going to try the an, standard an stuff. Um, acrobatics check to get out of it. Okay. Pull, just yeah. yeah. Natural 20? Yes. Yay! <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Yeah, that was a nat 20. You slither free from the chain. It comes loose from your flesh with kind of a wet, sickening pop oh. as its spikes kind of pull back out through you. Oh. I spit on it and I throw it away. 
You still have two actions left. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna uh, do a little bit of a heal. Actually, how many actions is it to take out a potion and drink? Uh, it'd be one to draw it and one to drink it. Okay, I'm going to do that with my um, moderate healing potion that I have. Which does what, 3d8 plus 10? Yes. All right, you can go ahead and roll that. I'll move on to the next uh, person in initiative. Please. I'm going to uh, shoot it more. I'm gonna do my hunted shot. All right. Oh, and Linnaeus, that potion will stop your bleed so you don't take it at the end of your turn. Good, 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 good. That is going to be a 28. A 28 will hit. Cool, cool, cool. Good. I wish you would roll better damage right now. That's 10 damage for the first one. Okay. Um, that is going to be 31 for the second hit. A 31 will hit. Not a crit, but it is a hit. Killing me. Five for the second one. The arrows are sinking into it. Um, uh, so the, sec the third shot won't hit. For my uh, final action, I would actually like to take cover. Take cover. Yeah, you're right near one of the cases, so you can kind of duck down. Yep. Now you are bleeding. Yep, I'm gonna. So go that. ahead and take a d6. Oh it, no, I took max damage. Okay, and then give me a flat check to see if it ends. Uh, fifteen. So uh, you know what? I think you rolled a fifteen too last mm -hmm. time, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, I had this reversed in my head. I was like, oh, you have to roll under a five. It's actually you have to roll a fifteen or higher. So both of you just ended your bleed. Effect. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, that doesn't mean it won't get applied again, but for now, it's yeah. it's it's off. Okay, so we just take that first. You do take it, yeah. but then you, you get to roll to see if it ends after that. And if you don't, you take it again next round, then you roll again, sure. et cetera, et cetera. I just had it backwards in my head. So uh, that was Liss, Tariel. Inspire Courage. Yes. Mirror Image. <laughs> Inspire Courage and Mirror Image. All right. It's my turn. Uh, there are now a bunch of you. You are bleeding, or did I miss you? No, missed I missed me. you. Yeah. All right. So that is the end of Tariel's turn. Omelet. It's still ten feet up in the air. Its chains are dangling down around the ground, trying to reach out and grab all of you. Yep. Quietly shout to myself. We need you. Come on, wake up. <laughs> You hit the stone, and at first you're like, oh no, because nothing seems to happen. And for a moment, just, just, just a moment, you're, you're, you're not sure it's going to work. And in the back of your head, you hear that voice going, you could still use me. I could help. And then the smoke begins to swirl out. Okay. And you are raging. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> are there any walls close by or can I literally just jump and swing? I have you, quick jump, so it takes one action to high you, jump for me. You cannot jump and swing. Okay. However, you could jump on top of the case. I jump on the swing. case. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me an athletics check. I don't even think this is one you can fail. Assurance. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. 20, uh, 23. All right, you jump right, away. right up on top of the case, which brings it to <sighs> within reach of you. And swing. And you can go ahead and swing. <sighs> Last action. 28. 29. Hit. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Boo, I say. Oh, I want this to be negative damage. Sure. Okay. Twenty-nine. Uh, it hisses and cries out. Uh, all right, but it is still fighting. That is the end of Omelette's turn. Iculus. I also have quick jump and assurance. Oh well, 
All right, it's a it's a jump on top of the case party then. <laughs> All right, you will need to draw your your sword though. Still, um, it's not drawn. Oh, that's right. Mm. But isn't it in your glove? That's true. The glaive isn't. The, the glaive. The glaive is in the glove. The glaive is in the glove. Oh, that's where you, that's what you put in the glove. Yeah, I figured. I figured as much. Now that I think about it, there's no way you would have walked around town with that thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have to draw it. Yeah, you have to draw the sword. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I draw my sword. All right. So that's action one. Yep. And quick jump is is one. One. You still get one attack. All right. I can't smite evil, but oh well. It's gonna be a twenty. Uh, twenty is not enough. You you jump. Twenty one. Yeah, you jump on top of the case and swing wildly, but it's just not enough to land. So top of the order, the curator goes. Uh, it uh, focuses now almost entirely uh, upon Tariel. Uh, it sends its first chain after uh, you. You have the bag. Yes. Which one of me has the bag? <laughs> well, there is that. It's going to try and find out. Uh, that is a 36. Oh, F. Yeah, that's a crit. Here we go. That's a one. No! No! <laughs> okay. Um, cool. It's going to impale you. Wonderful. Take 38 points of damage. Mm -hmm. Liberating step. Take 29 points of damage. Uh, you are also now bleeding and you are uh, impaled and anchored in place, grabbed by the chain. Oh my God. This thing! Uh, with its second uh, chain, it's going to strike out at Omelette. Okay. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, what? Oh, 34. That hits. It's not a crit, though. Yeah, I didn't think so. And I've got a skin, the bark skin right now. Okay, so uh, this is piercing damage, so you'll get to reduce the damage by what, two? It, yeah, it says resistance two. Yep, so that'll take the damage down by two, and I rolled a seven and 14, so take 12. Okay. And you are also now bleeding. We're gonna handle that. Okay. And with its third and final chain, it's gonna go after Iculus. It's a fool's errand, and no, it's not. that wouldn't have hit anybody in the group at all. <laughs> Didn't matter who I was swinging at, yeah. that was gonna be a mess. All right, uh, its chains continue to dance around the room, darting out, slashing at people, stabbing them. But that's it. Linnaeus. Um, who's within 60 feet of me in a cone? Um, I would say most of the party, why? Well, I have this ability as a cleric of feet uh, called directed channel, so instead of doing a 30 foot emanation, which I imagine will probably hit uh, the creature, it. I have to do a 60 yeah. foot cone and just hit my friends with this healing. Uh, because it's up in the air, I'll allow that to happen. Okay, yeah, sure. perfect. Um, then I'm going to use all three of my actions to heal. Um, and I get four D10 now for this one. 26 points back. Great. Everyone, 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 26 points. And I'm Lovely. no longer bleeding. And you're no longer bleeding. And uh, uh, except for Tariel. Tariel, you are still bleeding. Okay. That, that yeah. did not cure this. And even if you remove the chain, you'll still be bleeding until you get yeah. mm -hmm. it fixed while the chain is not impaling you. That was Linnaeus' turn. Liss. Yep. Uh, I'm going to duck out from behind cover. Okay. I did shot. All right. Uh, that is going to be uh, 29. 29 will hit. God, all of my damage diet rolling butts. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 damage. Every little barb helps. Mm. No, for the second one. All right, the arrow goes wide. Yep, third shot. Uh, that is going to be a uh, 24. A 24 misses. Yeah. And then last shot. Not 20. <laughs> nope. Mm. The arrows go winging off into the darkness, but do not manage to find the mark. It does look hurt, but it's still fighting Tariel. 
Um, I'd like to make an acrobatics check to get out of this. Go ahead. <laughs> That's going to be a 33. Oh, nice. I've never seen so many players get so ridiculously excited for removing the impaling <laughs> chains. Uh, <laughs> yes, that does it. Um, I mean, actually, you know what? Now that, now that I think about it, I have. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so uh, these things are horrible. Um, so yes, you managed to uh, get out of the chain that is pinning you in place. That was one action. What do you do next? And I should note, technically, that counts as an attack. It does? Yeah. Well... Should you make something that requires an attack roll? Well, I'll do Inspire Courage yep. um, as my second action. And then on my third action, I will move away. There you go. Uh, you... Uh, Just back up. Yeah. You attempt to move out of its threatened area. And I have to make a bleed roll still. Yeah, but before you do, my chain darts out to try and get you. Attack of the opportunity. No, but okay. Yeah, afraid okay. so. All right. <laughs> uh, armor class twenty-eight. Yeah, I guess that hits. Take fourteen points of damage. You continue to bleed. Now you may roll your bleed. Okay, so I'm gonna write fourteen. That okay. doesn't stop you from moving. You're able to continue. Oh. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. 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 Could have been worse. Could have been worse. I, just one. Yeah. And yeah. now roll me a d20 to see if the bleeding stops. Okay. Boom, no. Okay, that's not going to stop the bleeding. I rolled a five. Okay. No, it is not. You continue to bleed. Okay. That is the end of Tariel's turn. Omelette. Swing away. All right. <sighs> Thin reach. Its feet are anyway. What's that? Its feet are in reach. Feet and legs. Perfect. Yeah. Sweeping the legs. Yeah, the chains are dancing around you and piercing. No, no found. At you. Renewed confidence. Seeing those swirls, never know how much I missed them. And, oh, I missed this axe too. Oh, and just everything. Oh. Ooh. 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 Crit. Ah! <laughs> Roll just double damage. Oh, you don't um. gotta say it like that. <laughs> is that you hear what the, my mind is you saying? Hear, you hear the axe in the back of your head. I would have done it better. <laughs> oh, it's a 24. Doubled. doubled. So 48. 25 doubled. Huh? So 50. 50. Your axe swings up, slamming right into the center of its torso. The chains suddenly just go slack and the thing collapses from the ceiling above. It lets go of all of the rafters and pieces above, slams into the case the, that the two of you are standing on. The, the glass on this case was more like crystal and leaded and it, it was holding all of you in its metal frame. But when this thing slams into it, the whole thing shatters. <gasps> and uh, both of you are kind of tossed from it. Uh, you take a few points of damage, oh. we'll call it uh, three and four, three and four. Okay. Um, and uh, you're kind of tossed and tumbled from this as the case shatters. This has made a terrific amount of noise. Let's go. What do you do? Get the F out of there. Go as fast as you run, can run, run. before this wire's off. Yep. Let's go. So, um, the invisibility is gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the yeah. moment you engage in a whole bunch of fighting, the invisibility oh, yeah. uh, ended. That was fine. Um, and in fact, it had ended when you actually entered this chamber. Yeah, correct. Um, because it just ran out of time. Yeah. Um, but uh, what what what's your plan to make uh, your way out of here? Uh, let's on get the stairs. Let's get down to the bottom of the stairs. Invisibility, and then we'll sneak in until we get to. Have it prepared just in case we hear someone coming up the stairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, I've I'm got it. I've got that it. Second floor where the uh, uh, the forge is. Mm. That's where we wh where we pop it off. Good idea. All right, okay, let's go. go. All right, you make your way back out of the reliquarium, passing by all of the other sacred relics of Zan Kuthan. And uh, you make your way back down the stairs, uh, down to the second floor, uh, where you see the, the forge, the cold forge now. And uh, um, you can see now that it looks like it's gone out. 
Invisibility. Hog! It's done. As soon as we reach the platform, then we all gathered. All right. You've cast Invisibility, and you continue making your way down the stairs. What does it mean? Soon, you find yourself down on the ground floor again. There are nobles still here. The commotion that happened... 50 feet above through multiple, you know, floors and staircases didn't make it down to them. But if there was any alarms that went off or anything like that uh, because of this, you don't know what they are. So at the moment, at least, it looks like the ritual is still going on. And as you make your way here, you look out and see the, you're not sure if it's the first, but you see an acolyte step forth from the platform into that darkness. And you hear wails and agonizing screams coming from the courtyard and applause. Yep, we're sneaking, sneak, sneak, creep, 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 creep out of the, as out far of the, as out the cathedral. As, as, as far can. as we can. Mm-hmm. It, it, as, you, as you make your way through, you see all of the Nidalee's nobles watching this. Some in rapt attention. Some look, frankly, bored. Yeah, like even this, an entire train of human (laughs) suffering, and they're still just like, uh, when's the after party start, right? You know, uh, so, um, you know, some things never change. So uh, you make your way out, and I'm going to need you guys to make a group stealth check to make it out of here undetected. Yep. And let me know when it's been a minute. Oh, because once the rage is... My rage wears off, I'm exhausted. I'm assuming because you had to make your way down the stairs really mm. slowly. Okay. Right? The moment you're stealthing, you have to go real slow. Otherwise, sure. you're noisy, noisy, noisy. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I'm assuming your rage has already worn off. It wore off and you're holding me up a little. I got you, Omelette. Uh, I'm trying to decide whether I should spend my hero point. 18? Are you happy with an 18? Not particularly, and we really need to safely get out of here. Oh, this. Can I use that one? Slightly better, better, better. Uh, So that's going to be a 22. You sneak across the chamber of crowded nobles, making your way back to the main entrance. The doors are still flung wide open. The guests are all in, but there are, you know, there's always latecomers who are like, oh, I'm sorry, I was at my own private pain ritual and I nearly, I nearly missed out. Um, so there are some folk coming in and, and going, uh, but uh, it's very few. Mm-hmm. And you soon are able to make your way to the doors. Although when you approach the gates, you notice two of these chained fiends flanking them um and as you make your way past them their chains kind of twitch um like and and kind of dance in the air and they kind of look and look at each other um with these kind of vacant gray eyes and uh then they go back to paying attention to the events You are outside in the city of Ridwan. You are currently invisible for a few more minutes. We are heading straight for the West Gate. Okay. Well, you need to get out of this central area first, mm-hmm. right? This, this, there's a central courtyard area, and there's a path that leads straight back into the city. Yep, mm-hmm. that's what we're doing. Okay. As quickly as we can while staying yeah. together. And if we could find a near alleyway, I can cast Invisibility Sphere one more time. Yep, so be lining for some kind of alley. I'm going to have my head my hood pulled up just in case. Mm-hmm. If it Same. drops, All of us. I don't want them to be able to see my face, just in case that happens again. Okay. If you have a cloak, hood's up. <laughs> you are able to make your way out of the, the main central courtyard area. You can, even from this distance, hear the cries of agony as the acolytes step into the rift of darkness to meet mm-hmm. their dreaded lord. But you soon find yourself back out in the city. Do you cast invisibility right away, or are you just going to keep moving without it? I'd like to see if there's anyone around. Also, how long will it take us to get to the West Gate from here? So if you make your way to the West Gate from here, you're talking about about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, That's about how long it would take. Um, uh, On the upside, all of you authentically look like you have a bunch of chain-spiked wounds right now. So there's that you got going for you. But... uh, um, yeah, as far as people out, there are people in the city, right? Um, it is not 
uh, an empty place. Not everybody goes. Oh. There are plenty of servants and functionaries and even even some acolytes and stuff who have not earned the right to attend that festival. Um, so, um, you know, there are plenty of people still in town. Most of the important ones are at the, the festival, the, the ceremony. We're closer to the exit to pop off the invisibility. <laughs> yeah, just so it's not weird that we're leaving, leaving. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so we're going to make our way and then maybe a few minutes out, a few minutes before we get there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you make your way down to the West Gate. Uh, you, I'm assuming you find a place to become visible that isn't right out in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. I'm just going to go ahead and assume. Yeah. 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 Probably assume. Yeah. Alleyway. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not you're not rookies. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we are uh, the Knights of Everflame, <laughs> after all. I mean, occasionally you do try and talk in abyssal when you can't speak abyssal, but uh, other than that, uh, you're fine. So uh, you make your way uh, through the town and, uh, you know, kind of just using your ordinary disguises. Uh, I'm assuming you've put all put your weapons away so you don't yeah. aren't running around While looking we were super conspicuous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Soon enough, you find yourself approaching the West Gate. Now, there's an avenue that leads up to the West Gate, so you do have a view of it before you're right on top of it. And as you approach it, I mean, it's, you know, after midnight, the gate is closed. It's is, not open. Is there a side door? Like, sometimes there's, sometimes at yeah. big fortitude, like, fortified places like this, there's the little mm -hmm. side door. Mm -hmm. There, there might very well be one, but it would be in the guardhouse. Like, that's typically how those things work, where, like, you go through the guardhouse, sure. and that has a small, super fortified door that leads outside. Um, but... Uh, that's where that would be. And then there's the gates themselves. The walls, um, I should note, are like, they're about 20 foot tall. They are crenellated uh, in most places with kind of iron spikes. It's not the sort of wall where guards pace along it, though, mm -hmm. right? There's not, a, there's not a walkway up there. It's just a, a, a wall of protection. Duck into the alley. How do we want to do this? Well, there's a couple of options. You got one more of those uh, little dinghies? Little I have at least eight more uses of this. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, do you think there's, can you see if there's any guards and, and or is there a guard room like you said? There, are, I mean, even from this distance, you could see a couple guards pacing the gate. I mean, there are guards so, there. There are guards there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we definitely don't want to try to open that gate. Mm -mm. That's a big no-no. No. Our best luck is actually trying to go in through that guardhouse and out that door. So there might be guards place. in there, but if we're invisible and we're very, very quiet, the door will open and close and that will be a little bit weird, but you know, nobody will be able to see us. Can mm. we, do you have a veil? That doesn't <laughs> sound like that's a veil. Or we could, ooh. I do have one more veil. Like, this, like, like the guards. Yes. Cast my last veil for the day. Okay. We all look like those guards. All right. And you make your way up to the West Gate. Mm -hmm. You approach the gate and uh, uh, quickly uh, are uh, stopped by um, one of the, as you are at about 20 feet away, one of the guard captains comes out of the guard house and is like, uh, what's your business here? We heard rumors of people trying to break in. I haven't heard any such rumors. Who gave you those orders? It was coming from Uh, someone at the north gate. <laughs> give me a deception check. <laughs> oh God, okay. Sorry, it was the best I could give I know, I totally blanked. Uh, I was wondering if you'd remember his name. Oh, the Lector? Oh, Lector! Velarkis? Velarkis. I wrote it down. I have it written Vlarkis. down right here. Oh, wow. Well, you've already said someone at the north gate. What's oh. your deception check? 27. No. 31. He looks at you. Lector Velarkis? Yes, that's the one. I would have assumed he was at the, the ceremonies. He is not. They kind of look at each other. He left the ceremony because he heard about the people trying to break in at the North Gate. Well, no one's giving us any word. I'm giving you word. Um, they kind of look at each other confused. Um, do you have Intimidate? Not really. Not really. But I do. I do too. I, I know you do, but she's <laughs> the one talking. Um, Coming intimidatingly over her shoulders? Yes. Mm, can I do that? You do have intimidating glare. Yes. Fine. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you got it. You don't have to talk. <laughs> you players making... always one step ahead. <laughs> making crazy eyes on the other side of him. <laughs> um, so that's going to be a twenty-five. They kind of look at each other. Open up the gate, and uh, <laughs> with that, they open up the gate and let you out Good of bye. Ridwan. And we're going Bonus. to walk at a regular pace. Oh, but while pace. It look like you're patrolling. Yes. It's, it's you have to do that like walk as fast as as you as can like, while still like looking normal. Just like a very like a very <laughs> official <laughs> march. march. We're flying casual. Uh. Very official march. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. So, Just. um, you have made your way out of Red One. Oh my. <laughs> Yep. What do you do? We are going to, as surreptitiously as possible, make ourselves go easterly. We're going to do a perimeter check. So okay. That so I'm assuming you're going to go around the south or the north side? Um, since we came, f uh, you're, you're going to have to refresh my memory here, and I would imagine that Liz would remember this. Yeah. When we first came into, uh, when we first approached Ridwan, we approached from the south and headed counterclockwise up to the north, correct? You approached from the uh, east, east of Ridwan, yeah, and right, coming out of, uh, out of Multhoon, mm -hmm. and hit Ridwan, and then you went counterclockwise uh, to the north right. gate. And uh, what's his head is at the north gate. He's at the north gate. We know he's not actually there, um, but we're going to avoid that gate. West, south to the east is what I was wanting to, because I don't want us to, uh, to avoid the north gate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you, yeah, you you go out west a bit just to get away from the gate. I get that, and then you're gonna go, you're gonna go uh, counterclockwise around. So you go south. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I guess from your perspective, it's that way, and go uh, that way around the the city, and then immediately head east. east. Make it look mm -hmm. like we're doing a perimeter the way we uh, came patrol. From. All right. As west as we can go to not be in direct sight of. So it's very late at night. Mm -hmm. And the journey around the city of Ridwan takes you several hours. Now that said, the area directly around the city is kind of the clearest area of razor sharp rocks and boulders. So it is kind of the most navigable, mm -hmm. but it still takes you like, like two hours to walk all the way around. It's not a huge town, but because you're taking this wide yeah. circumference, it takes a while. During this period of time, you can hear um, distant echoes and, and cries of whatever ritual it is continuing. The, uh, the folk that you talk to in town said that it oftentimes takes three, four, maybe even five hours. And as of yet, nothing has changed. So by the time you get to the other side of the, the city and begin your trek back through the weeping fields, you think the ritual might still be going on, although it's gotta be getting close to its end. Brisk pace. Mm -hmm. I'm using all of my survival skills at this point to help us move as quickly as possible over the terrain. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you begin moving east as quickly as your legs will carry you. The darkness is complete, but the sky itself shows some sign of its daily lightening, uh, not that it ever gets bright. The sun does not shine on Nadal. You're trekking through this, these canyons of razor sharp rock. You're moving as quickly as you can. Liz, can you make me a survival check to tell me how well the party is getting along? Uh, that's a 23. 23, you happy with that? I don't have a coin to spend, so I'm gonna have to be. All right. Um, there, there are some double backs. Um, you lose a little bit of time. You're not quite going as quick as you, you might hope, but uh, you're still making progress. Um, I'm almost a little exhausted, so. Oh, I'm um, good now, it's been a minute. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> uh, actually, all of you are starting to get exhausted. You've now been I'm up all you night. Now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. you are all starting to get rather worn out and exhausted. You know that the journey from here back to the border is at least, I mean, maybe if you marched almost nonstop, maybe you could do it in a day and a half, um, you know, uh, yeah. and assuming that you, assuming you don't have any missteps or anything, you could really push it and push yourselves. Um, but normally it would take almost double that. 
Can we make it back to, to Landry? In this? I don't feel like it is a safe idea. The moment they figure out that that thing is gone, they're going to be out hunting, and the risk that we draw, like that, that, that we will draw them accidentally. I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't <laughs> imagine that they are blocked from seeing where this thing is. It's entirely possible. We don't know what kind of power they have. I don't want to risk bringing them down on that. On the on the bellflower. When we get closer, can you send a message to him, and just see if he can quickly give us directions on the fastest and safest way out? Since yes. you'll have to yes. be very yes. close we, for that. We have to get five hundred within five hundred feet. We'll keep. Do we need to sleep, or do we want to keep going? We will need to sleep eventually. I say we go as far as we can. We have to. We have to check on as far as we can. Because then, if we sleep, I can get Wanderer's guide. Okay. All I have to do is sleep. Do you want to do it now, or do we want to keep going? Keep going. Let's keep go. Going. Right now, your distance from Ridwan, you know, uh, going. is several miles, yeah, right? I mean, you know, you, you've really made the circle going. around, yeah. right? Uh, all right, you continue pushing into the early hours of the morning. Um, oh. The journey is relentless. You are all pushing yourselves to the limit of your energy. Um, the, the journey through this terrain itself is a wretched and horrible one, um, made even worse by the fact that you're not fully paying attention to things. Um, some of you, I, I'm wagering, are still wounded, um, and uh, you are uh, you know, all now rapidly succumbing to fatigue. Um, as a matter of fact, you can all consider yourself fatigued at this point. Put it down. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that uh, quite hungry. It, it is possible for us to have covered about somewhere between five and 10 miles? Um, I, uh, you, the rate that you are traveling is going to give you a few miles per hour. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of the pace you're moving at. Um, so yeah, from, uh, you know, about 1 AM to now you've probably traveled, you know, I would say you've probably gotten about 10, 15 miles from the town. Once, once I've, once we've gotten at least at least that far, then I'll be. Then I'll do a quick search around to see if I can find us a safe place to tuck in. And Give me a survival check. Yep. That's good. Um, it's a thirty-one. Okay. Um, you managed to find a, a sheltered uh, alcove uh, in a in a bit of a of a of a rock hovel there's kind of like a bowl-like depression where there are some there's some slate overhang and it, it looks like a kind of a quieter darker place uh where you could possibly crawl into and find some some relative solitude i take first watch i'll take okay. se second watch i can take third i'll do fourth nice. get some sleep okay so you get some rest as best you can. All of you have unpleasant sleep. It is tortured. It is uncomfortable here. Um, you are um, unable to kind of shake some of the things you saw in Ridwan uh, from your mind. Um, each of you kind of tosses and turns while the others hold watch. Linnaeus, there is a darkness. Your entire dream is filled with darkness. Shadows that just swirl around you. The, the darkness of that place was one of shadows and, uh, you know, uh, this kind of eternal gray gloom. But your dreams are somehow darker. And no matter how often you wake up and try and go back to sleep, they still plague you. You you you're getting restless sleep, but it's 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 it, it's going to count as sleep, but just barely. You're still going to be fatigued tomorrow, um, and uh, your your entire dreams are just kind of inundated with this kind of oily darkness that pulls around you and swirls about you. And as you wake up with a start, the only thing that you hear in the back of your head 
Soon, child. Soon. I'm going to take out that little nub of candle that I took from the Temple of Serenry, and I'm going to light it. And I'm just going to hold it. Stare at it. And as you do so, you find that your, your memories of that are kind of brushed aside. Like a sandcastle just pushed away. Hmm. And um, uh, you, you kind of curl up with that candle and manage to get some restful sleep, which will allow you to reprepare your spells. First thing I'm doing in the morning. Walking well, it's down. not the morning. It's the no. it's the mid afternoon, maybe. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you don't know what time it is anymore. You've left that town, and with it, the only clock that you knew. And uh, already now, it's like, is it the afternoon? Is it the early evening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me look up at the sky. I, I don't. It know. all looks the same. Yeah. yeah. Are we <laughs> yeah. What? We still fatigued? Um. No. No. Whew. You have managed to get some rest. Um. However, who was on last watch? Me. Yes. All right. So after after you wake up and are uh, you know performing your morning prayers and keeping an eye out, uh, somewhere off in the distance, a bell begins to ring. <gasps> ding, 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 yes. and it continues to ring the entire uh, for the next entire hour. I, I imagine we're going as fast as we can. Yep. Right as now and as soon as that, as soon as uh, Linnaeus wakes us up, we're gone. Yep. As soon mm -hmm. I cast one Wanderer's Guide, so I know um, the most inspired route to get. That means you no longer need to make survival checks to know the right path. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, brilliant. Thank you. Beautiful. Linnaeus. Thank you for a rest. Sort of. <clears throat> Your God loves you. <laughs> the group of you begins racing back towards the border mm. as fast as your legs will carry you. Later on during that travel period, you see something behind you. Everybody give me a perception check to <sighs> see if you can get a good view of it. Take that. I want to see this. I mean, that's not great. 24. 25. 32. 26. 15. Everyone but Linnaeus. <laughs> uh, you, you, you notice that uh, there are these, the best way to describe them is like spheres of chain. Oh. Flying through the air, there's... Don't like that. Mm -mm. Multiples. And they are just soaring around over the city, back in the direction that you came, and they are slowly starting to fan out. There's Logan. Yep, they're, they're trying to find us. Go, go, go. Yep. And maybe they don't know. They, they may don't. not have a link. They might not. Let's get going. Let's yeah. go. And we dash. Just we, running. We need yeah. to keep going, but we... Running. I, I, since we have the most inspired route, I'm also making sure that we have a route that's got some cover, that we're not going to be out in the open. You can do your best. It's it's really hard to do here unless you're willing to sacrifice efficiency. Yeah, we need um, to get out as fast as we can. Get to the light. Mm -hmm. Speed over stealth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Linnaeus, give me an occult, an occultism check. Or sorry, not Linnaeus. Toriel. Oh. Toriel, give me an uh, occultism check. I do have occultism. Okay. Oh, no. I do too. Uh, do I? 28. Nice. Wait. Yes, 28. So it occurs to you, since you have the Bag of Holding, Bag of Holding is a way to store a thing in an extra dimensional space. Mm -hmm. And it may very well be that while it's in there, nothing can detect it. Oh. Oh. oh, they can't detect it because the Bag of Holding is an interdimensional space. Oh, well, I learned something new today. I just remembered. What good luck. Oh, yeah, your bag uh, of tricks. I love it all. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> let's keep really running. Yeah. That keep means running. we cannot take that out near <laughs> anyone we care about. Not, not near here. It's not until we get no. to the light. Let's no. go. We run. We run. also run. not near the city. No. Flee. You race back toward the border <clears throat> as fast as your legs will carry you through the weeping fields. The rest of this travel period you spend moving through these razor sharp canyons of rock. And as the afternoon goes on, 
or evening Whatever or time morning. Just ahead, you see some of the kind of broiling clouds of shadow. And they're, they're still, still several miles away. But you are approaching the Umbral Basin. Is that Temple of Terran right there? That's on the other side. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we're just getting there. Okay. Keep running, keep running. As you make your way up to it, you travel for another few hours, renewed by the fact that at least you're back to that other horrible place mm -hmm. that you travel through. <laughs> Closer to Mothun, though. Yeah, not that. It's true. You get there, and emerging from the cloud of darkened shadow is a sphere of change. <gasps> and it is looking right at all of you. Great. But... No. It is still quite a ways off. It's looking at us though. Oh yeah. Yeah, it kind of stops, it kind of goes out, and it's like, it's probably about a quarter of a mile away just as you're kind of climbing up over some rocks, and it kind of comes out of that smoke, and the moment it, it sees you, it kind of stops and spins a bit, and the chains and kind of knives that are around it kind of undulate a bit, and then it just vanishes. Oh, well, it's it back into the cloud? No, it just vanishes, period. Like I did with Loggy. Well, it's all us. Keep, it's all us. We keep just have to keep running, going. Keep moving. Yes, running. So based on the travel that you did last time, if you rested here yeah. uh, and got up the next day, you would push into fatigue, but you could get out after one more period of travel. If you push now, you would be fatigued and then have to rest, but could get out, but then you'd be resting in there. So you're okay. you're more than one whole day's okay. worth of travel away from the border, at least. Um, so, um, and fortunately with the, the kind of perfect guidance, that really helps. So, but that's, that's the challenge you're facing right now. I have a maybe idea. Okay. Send a message to Landry. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't answer, maybe we push on I don't know if we're close enough. You're not. I have to then do maybe 500 we, feet. Then maybe we push on till we're in the range. They might be the safest place we can bed down. Are they, have we not yet passed where they were yet? No, their entrance was somewhere ahead at the edge of the Emerald Basin. Mm -hmm. And even then you marched for like an hour or two from where they brought you out to get to the end. All right, let's push at least until there then. That is an, an, not a bad idea. There's nobody behind us yet. Sure. Mm. That being said, there will be behind, people behind us soon. Can I do an occult? To, 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 I just want to know if the eyeball is invisible or if he's gone. There's no way for you to know. <sighs> There's nobody at our back yet. So let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's push. Uh, in other words, it could literally be either one. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. All right, you push on. Uh, you begin to grow more and more weary with every step, drawing closer and closer to the umbral veil. Um, as it draws near, its wispy shadows slowly start to reach out and embrace you. Um, it, it was horrifying the first time. Now it is the first step toward home. You're not as far away now. You're almost out of this horrifying place. That was a little bit too visceral. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you approach this uh, kind of curtain. It, it's not really a curtain, but it is kind of the def definitive boundary of where the shadows begin. Before we go in here, I want to cast Detect Magic. If it is invisible, I want, I want to... Okay. Um, yeah, you can do that every once in a while, uh, just to sense yeah. and see if, any, if there's any magic in the area, and you don't get anything. Okay, well... Yeah. Um, you begin to draw into the shadows and uh, darkness. Looking back because this is your last chance to look back before that is clouded and gone from view. The upside is, so are you. Um, uh, I would ask you to make perception checks, but what happens is so blatantly obvious I don't need you to. A few miles back at the spot where you were, on the top of a crest, a black doorway opens in space. Oh. And stepping out of it are dozens of these chained fiends many soldiers. It looks like the city is throwing a, a small platoon after you of these things. We can't go to Landry now. Mm -mm. We have to keep going. Are we trying to hide? 
let's just go in. They're going to have as diff hopefully as difficult a time finding us as we have in there. Hopefully. We have to keep going. How far away are they? A few miles. They're back at the spot that you were mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, about an hour ago when th that thing saw you. Mm -hmm. okay, then I guess Looks like it, whatever it did, it took a while for it to get everything ready, but mm -hmm. now it's back where you were. Mm -hmm. I think we have to press on at least a mm -hmm. few more miles before we even think about going to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's got to give us a boost of something, like a... Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, you're, you're, <laughs> you're tired. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's certainly an adrenaline surge from yeah. seeing yeah. the forces that are now following you. Yeah. Um, well, but you have no idea how quickly they're going to be able to close in on you. Mm -hmm. They they don't waste time. They start moving. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the first thing that happens is a number of these small orbs start darting out from their location, fanning out. You're not sure they've seen where you went. And you are now moving off into the shadows and darkness. Mm -hmm. But considering where you came from and where they spotted you, you can't imagine that they're going to look any way other than the direction that you've currently traveled. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, yeah, that's just common sense. So you make your way off into the Umbral Basin. How many more hours do you want to travel? Three? I'm Two okay. or three? Mm -hmm. You will be thoroughly exhausted. I mean, you have the fatigue condition, but you're going to be really tired by the time you, you decide to take a rest. It's, it's worth it. Rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once we've we've cleared at least you know five six miles, then I will I will try to find us a spot. I've okay. had I in that last hour or so, I've turned on my goggles so that I can see. It helps a little, especially when some of the darkened clouds move through you. Um, but you make your way off into these fields. If it wasn't for the the uh, Linnaeus's magic guiding your way, you would have gotten lost half a dozen times by now and given back a whole bunch of time that these things are spending following you. Your only hope is that they are as slowed as you were the first time you went in here. Fingers no gone. promises, but so, that's the hope. This Wanderer's Guide will last until I prepare spells again, so yeah. we have it as long as we stay awake. We need to sleep, we all do. I, mm -hmm. I don't think my legs can carry me any further. Let's search then. <sighs> Great. Uh, that is a, uh, that's a 19. Liz, you go searching around for a campsite and again, you can't find a great one, but uh, this place, it seems impossible to find a good place to rest. And uh, you do find a, a, a kind of sheltered overhang at least, um, but it's pretty exposed. And uh, uh, you manage to uh, find at least that place. At least you're not near poisonous gas this time, but you are kind of exposed. This isn't very hidden. Can I do a quick craft check to sort of make a, a like a like a hunting facade? You can try with some of the rocks and stuff nearby. Go ahead. I have crafting as well. Sure. I can help her. I yeah. Also have twenty seven. Okay. Ooh. 29. I love you Ooh. both very, very much. <laughs> you you do the best Not that you can. Day. You do the best that you can, but I'm going to be honest, you don't have a lot of material to work with. That's it's okay. just kind of it's rocks and, and, mm -hmm. and a bit of like dead brush and stuff, but it isn't much. All right. Do you mind if I take second or third watch this time? I'll stay up. I'll take first. I'll take second. You take third watch. Okay. I'll take I, last again. A spellcasters need some. You get some rest. It's fitful. It's not comfortable. You are not safe here. You hear yowls off in the distance again, reminding you of the beast that tracked you down last time. But at least this time, they seem to have missed you. You wake up in the morning and are preparing spells and getting yourself ready when one of these spheres darts right by. Invisibil invisibility. As soon as I see the sphere dart over us, I'm gonna cast invisibility sphere. Yeah. Yeah, you, you cast Invisibility Sphere, but you you can't imagine that it didn't see you. It has eyes, like, on multiple sides of its body. Okay, mm -hmm. Wanderer's Guide, time to run. Time to run. As Let's quick go. as we can run. As you cast Wanderer's Guide and begin moving off again, you can hear echoes of chains slithering across stone in the valley. And it doesn't sound very far away. It sounds like it's possibly some of it's even in front of you. It's, it's hard to say. You, you've slept, you've regained uh, your spells, you've rested, but the time is, is running out. These things are all around you. You continue making your way uh, 
Now, once again, with the correct path, that is a huge help. It really does lead you through this place quickly and efficiently. Thank you. And the slithering chains that were at one point in time kind of all around you recede a little, but you can still hear them as the day progresses, as you continue to make your way. It is incredibly dark. Uh, Even for this place, it's very dark. Um, And your path uh, leads you through this. It seems like ours, but fortunately you did push on last night. So instead of being like eight or nine hours today, after four or five hours, there is the first bit of thinning. You continue pushing as fast as your guide will carry you. And your legs are pumping now, moving across this rock as quickly as you can. The chain noises sometimes swell in intensity, getting ominously close, and then seem to fade back. You're not sure where they are slithering out there in this darkness, but whatever it is, they are on your trail. You can hear baying, baying of hounds. Somewhere off in the distance, they are tracking you, and they are hot on your tail. Racing through the shadow and gloom, eventually it begins to thin. And off in the distance, you see stones of the church, the ruined church of Serenray. That's where we're going. So close. There. I'm beelining for it. And yes. beyond it, Multhoon. <laughs> and it's still night. Oh, no. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But they can follow get us there. in this. Get, get to the temple. We can't go get over there. there. Get there. Get to the temple. Okay. You are looking off to the east, and you still see a darkened sky. You're still, and, and mind you, this is like the mists kind of part to give you a glimpse of it, and then it kind of closes back off. You're not at the border yet. Um, you're still at least several miles away. and uh, but, but off in the distance, although it appears to be night, you are looking to the east. And there is the thinnest line of light. But that probably means that dawn is still an hour, hour and a half off. So you continue rushing uh, forward, uh, trying to make your way out of this gloom. The chains slithering forward. You can hear them kind of rasping on the stones. And even once you kind of put your hand on the rock and saw chain kind of slither off into the darkness, they must be all around you. It's kind of a miracle they haven't stumbled upon you yet. And you can now hear their laughter. It's almost as if they know that they have you. Um, they don't, they're not done yet. Um, I'm going to use my um, illusory staff and do um, ventriloquism uh, 60 feet uh, behind us and to the right. Behind you and to the right. All right. You use your staff to make some noise, some talking, some panicked cries. Yeah. They're so close to us. We need to keep going. Quick, turn back. (laughs) <laughs> um, and at that, the chain that was right nearby, you hear it kind of slither and head back in that direction. You are a miracle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Go, go, you go, continue go, rushing go, go. forward, and the, the, the mist and fog begins to fade. And now you find that they are slowly starting to recede. And you can see the shrine. It is still like, you know, it's still like about a mile distant. We are just No, I know that you are. And looking back behind you, you see that the mist and fog is fading there as well. And at the very edge of it, you see these chained forms emerging from the darkness. Some of them holding longer chains, guiding these baying shadow hounds with them. It is an entire swarm of these things stomping and moving forward. Some of these little spheres uh, darting about. And as you race forward, one form pulls forward from the pack, moving faster than all the rest. It is darting forward supernaturally fast. And as it does so, you can see that it's being propelled on chains and In its center, there is a black-clad leather form, its body bound, tortured, 
pained. Why have you brought me back? That's right. I am going to make sure that you don't escape. And in the center, you see the face of Lucky. No. Tormented, <gasps> twisted, and pulled. He comes writhing no. forward with chains and knives. Roll initiative. <laughs> that That's Scout's warning. <laughs> Can you make me a horse? God. It'll take 10 minutes. What are, what oh, is with these terrible initiative rolls. Why? Why you do this? Uh, okay, oh, fine. boy. It's Lucky, fine. why won't you stay dead? It's fine. It's fine. Linnaeus. 26. Tario, what do you have? 25. Liss. 21. Do I have any left? No. Omelet. 27. Iculus. 23. And 15 for a battle cry. Not even close. He looks at you. <laughs> My dread lord has given me all sorts of new pleasures to bring to you as he kind of stomps forward on all these chains. He goes first. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yep, that sounds about right. Are we still fatigued? Just want to check. Um... Yes. You will take a minus one penalty to AC and saving throws. Oh, we are? We are? Yes. I thought we slept. You did, but not comfortably. You did not find a comfortable place to sleep. <laughs> minus one to AC yep. and saving throws. It surges forward, and as, it's, as Lucky does so, his face changes to that of your father. And he cries out at you. Give me a will save. Rude. Save me, son. It's going to be a 29 minus 128. That's just going to make it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and his face shifts back to that of Lucky, and he's like, <laughs> You'll join him in the chain soon enough. You notice he has one of these daggers mm. in his hand. Into beast. That beast is Shellen. He spends a second action to move up uh, closer to you, but he's not adjacent to you. He's a bit further back. Um, he's uh, kind of come up to the back of the group. You weren't running single file or anything. You're just kind of bolting forward. So, so he's not adjacent to anybody, but he does stop, and he's about 10 feet away from you, and a chain comes darting out at you. Thirty-nine. Crit. Damn. Take thirty-eight points of damage as the chain slashes through you, and you now have one d10 persistent bleed. Oh, what? That is his turn. Omelet. Ah. I reach back. Uh huh. What are you grabbing? The new one. Okay. You grab the new axe and it's like, yes, 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 I'll show you the way. Please forgive me, Rage. Does it rage? It takes way longer than you think it should. I start charging. And as you approach, the smoke finally envelops you. <gasps> He's how many feet away from me versus uh, About 15. 15 feet. Okay. Um, can I take a defensive stance? I don't want to move closer to him. Um, yeah, you can just kind of hold off and kind of duck behind a bit of a rock. Linnaeus. How far away is the temple? <clears throat> like a mile. A mile? Oh, okay. Mind you. Um, it, it's actually, you know what, you ran a bit further. Uh, it took a while for this thing, this thing that is Lucky's tormented soul, brought back from the Shadow Realm. Uh, it took a little bit for it to get to you, so three quarters of a mile. Great. Maybe maybe closer to a half, but it's still a long ways. That's far away. Um, okay. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, forbidding ward. 
on Aculus and, and lucky. Thank you. Uh, so that's just going to negate your fatigue. Uh, and then I run further. <laughs> I, I run further away. Oh, it's time. You cast Forbidding Ward and move 30 feet away, or 25 feet? 25. All right. It is yep. time. Tariel. Inspire Courage. I am shocked. Oh, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to haste Iculus. You are hasted. That is the end of Tariel's turn. Iculus. Iculus looks at him. You think I'm scared of you? I've waited 20 years for this moment. To face you head on. Come at me. I smite evil. Hasted. And I've got Forbidden Ward, right? I'm all kinds of jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's going to be a 34. That is going to hit. But I do want to stress, you had to draw your weapon. Mm -hmm. You had to smite evil. Yeah. You had to move up to him. Okay. And you had to attack. So that attack is your hasted action. Sure. I mean, or the move is your hasted action, whatever. Either way. Um, so uh, this is going to be the only attack you get, but it is a hit. Go ahead and deal me some damage. Okay. It's going to be 19. Could have been better. And you're dealing good damage to me? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, that's not good. Or, I mean, because you're smiting me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. He's I take extra. Evil. Uh, um, your blade slices into him and he screams in pain. Oh, 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 oh I remember that. Ooh it, ooh, it hurts more now. Oh, 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 I'm going to look forward to sending you into the same lightless abyss I sent your father. Like father, like son, both die in my hands. Do you ever stop talking? <laughs> I mean, eventually. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. You know. Sometimes I. Shut know. up. All right. Oh, Linnaeus. <laughs> oh, it's me. Oh, sorry. Uh, Liz. It oh, is it your is turn. my turn. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, hunt prey. Quick draw. Shoot. Very good. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a thirty. Dead on. Great. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> we have to roll up. First, you need to crit on this asshole. <laughs> Six, nine, <gasps> Fourteen? Fourteen damage? Mm-hmm. And pray, quick draw, shoot. One more shot. All right. Nope. Oh, my God. You fire off another arrow, it wings off into the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> the lucky face. Ah. Lucky ghost. Mm-hmm. His first chain darts out at Iculus, mm. intent upon returning the favor. Oh, man. An AC of 40 is going to hit. Uh. A crit. Take 32 points of damage. And you know what? I forgot it at the end of your turn, but take a D10 bleed right now as well. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm. <sighs> It's a one. Okay. okay. I'll take that. And even if it ended last round, it starts back up right now. So uh, we won't bother rolling said, that. Uh, how much damage? 30. Uh, it was. 38? 32, I think. It was 32. 32 points of damage. Yeah. And then plus the one. Yep. It's a mere flesh wound. Oh. He's like, oh, is it? <laughs> oh, all right. He attacks again. Mm. Thank you, Ash. And that's a 14 plus. Uh, 14 plus 18 is a 32. It's not a crit. Uh, that's only going to do uh, 14 points of damage. And he is intent upon putting an end to you. He's going to attack you with his third attack as well, but that one actually I think is going to miss. That's only a 18. Yeah, that's going to miss. He's like, ah! Get back here. I'm not done with you yet. I want to watch you bleed. Um, that was Lucky's turn. Yep. Omelette. 
when I hear him attacking, get up and sudden charge. Okay. Two of your actions. Twenty-seven. Next roll. So with sudden charge, you actually have the movement to go on the other side of him, by the way, if you want. I mean, it's risky. I don't know if you want to do that. Oh, you mean to flank him? Yep. Yeah, it's ri- I don't care if it's risky. Yeah, he takes an attack opportunity. That's think, fine. So, yeah. Um, I actually rolled really poorly. That might actually miss you. That's Just that's a terrible roll. Uh, 26? That still hits. Oh, all right. You, uh, we're fatigued. Oh, all right. And I'm raging. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I know some of you are close to that number. No. Um, so uh, that's going to do 19 points of damage, and you now have a d10 points of bleed. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, you do get into the flanking position, but a 27 is still going to miss. Yeah. Roll again. All right. Same roll. All right. Um, you uh, uh, desperately try and hit him, but your your axe just cannot connect. And uh, you hear the uh, axe in the back of your head say, "You know, I can I can help more. I can help more if you if you let me." How? I, I have ways to help. I could help. Do you want help? Shut up. All right. Linnaeus. How far away am I from everything? Uh, you are about 15 feet. You move 25 feet. You're 40 feet away. Okay. And this lucky thing is up in the air? No, not really. No? I mean, it's it's moving around kind of, you know, like on chains and stuff being dragged around, but it's not like flying or anything like that. Okay. Uh, the, the only thing among these things that seem to fly are these little spheres, um, but they seem to stay away from you. They're not, they don't look like they're they're much for fighting. They're more like spies. Mm. How far away am I from Aculus specifically? Uh, almost the same distance, 35 feet. Okay, I'm going to um, pop a divine wrath. Um, okay. Anything within 120 feet is gonna need to make a fortitude safe. Uh, that would be, that would be lucky. Okay. He's gonna make it. Okay, but by how much? It's not a it's not a critical success. It's okay. Just a success. Half of twenty one. Yeah, it's like a twenty nine. Okay. So he takes ten. Yep. Ten good damage. Yep. Now, now, ah, stop it, you, yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> ah. he's like picking at himself, and like his flesh is burning and falling off. He's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. ah. With my last action, I'm gonna keep running. I'm sorry. Tariel. All right, inspire courage. <laughs> yes. And then, um, how far away am I from omelet? Um, not far. Uh, Fifteen feet, twenty feet. Great. Forbidding ward. Great. Okay. On you. That's the end of my turn. <sighs> okay. That was Tariel. Iculus. Iculus goes down. Put his hands on his chest, where the amulet is. And calls upon Shellen to come to him. Mm-hmm. And he says, I ask for a glaive, I ask for your weapon for this moment. Please come down and bless this with the most positive energy you can. so I can kill this awful being that's coming after us and we can release the souls of all these people who were trapped in this hell of Zonkuthon, including my father. All right, what do you do? Pulls out the, drops the bastard sword. Just drops it. Use the glove of storing. The glaive pops into your hands. It's silver blade gleaming in the shadow. Nicholas feels the power of Shellen. Lucky kind of looks at it like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> and a smite evil. It's already smite evil. Yep, because he attacked one of your allies. 
It's going to continue through this round. Go ahead and make an attack. You have four actions. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, it just spun forever. <laughs> what do you got? Um, it's, it's a minus one of the regular. Yeah, it's one less than your normal yeah. weapon because it's not a plus one. That's okay because it's a 36. Or no, excuse me. 30, 33. Hit. So the glaive is only going to do a D8 points of damage. Uh, plus your strength modifier, plus retribution because lucky hurt you, plus smite evil. Smite evil. So it's going to be plus 10. So it's a D8 plus 10. Or plus 11 because of Inspire Courage. Oh. That was... <laughs> oh. It's a one. So. So 12 damage. However, it is both silver and you just did good damage to me. So I take both of my weaknesses. Um, so that's 12 plus 30 is 40. Oh, 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 excuse me. Oh. Did you oh. say 30? <gasps> Screams as it touches him. He's like, ah, oh, oh, that's awful. That that hurts in a bad way. <laughs> pulls the glaive out and just holds it up. And it's, <sighs> what are you doing? He's with, shaking with the power. What are you doing with your second action? Oh, he's going right back in. I'm, maybe <laughs> I'm not surprised. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. Minus five. Oh, that's going to be a 27. A 27. Flank I'm flanking. Is a miss. It's a miss. Oh, oh, no. You can roll the third and fourth attack if you like, but you're going to have to almost roll 20s. 20s, yeah. Uh, it's not going to hit. All right, you still have the fourth action. I mean, you can try. Uh, All right. You swing twice more with the glaive, but Lucky seems terrified of that weapon now. He's kind of dancing away from it as best he can. Liss, it is your turn. Yep. Hunted shot. Okay. Mm. Uh, only uh, 23, so that won't hit. 23 will not hit. Uh... That is only a 25, which will not hit. Yeah. Your arrows are flying and they're deflected by chains. Nope, that won't hit. And last one. Nope. Desperate, you fire arrow after arrow after Lucky, but his chains seem to bat them away. It is the bottom of the order. The things that are chasing up behind you have closed a lot of the distance. They are coming. They are, they're just not here yet. Yep. Uh, uh, Lucky seemed to move supernaturally fast. Uh, these things are moving a bit slower, but they are closing the distance. Um, they could be here in a few rounds. Okay. That was Liss. Top of the order. Lucky. His chain darts out at Iculus. Crit. No! Oh, freaking Christ. Oh, no, 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 no. That was just an at 20. I don't even oh, have no. to look. No, no, no. Aculus can take 38 points of damage. Ooh, I'm going, I'm going, this is struggle town now. Oh, no. Um, am I still bleeding? Uh, yeah, but that's not until the, your turn. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, you should yeah. have taken a d10 at the end of your turn. Thanks for reminding me. Two. Two. Are you still up? Yeah. He's going to throw his uh, second attack at Omelette, yep. actually. Nah, I never did like you. Armor class 25. Because I'm raging, it hits. As the chain slices through you, take 16 points of damage. You are now d have a D10 persistent bleed. I already did. Oh. All right, and uh, and Lucky screams out, "I prefer pancakes!" Uh, and with his third attack, he's going to return that to Achilles. Uh, it does. He doesn't need to because with the bleed damage, I'm I'm dying. You fall. No. Mm -hmm. 
You fall to the ground. You are now dying too because that was a crit that put you down. Mm -hmm. And you're bleeding. (sighs) Okay. Which means I will now put your initiative before his. If you... If it gets back to your turn and you fail the stabilization check, you will take bleed damage and go down even further, which will kill you. In that case, I'll throw the last one at uh, Omelette, and that's going to miss. Linnaeus, you moved further away. You were 15 feet, then 25, uh, 40 feet. You are currently 60 feet away. Uh, I think you might be too far. I don't think you can get back and cast a heal spell. No, it's not heal. Can I get within 30 feet of him? I mean, I can't, I can't even, oh, I have stabilized, but I can't even do that before your turn. Yeah, you wouldn't have two actions left. Nope. Am I able to hold my turn to go after someone else? You can delay. Tario, it's your turn. Okay, um, Inspire Courage, I'm gonna keep that up, and then I'm going to do Soothe, which um, is heightened, so I can cast it at fourth level. Yep. Um, So that is going to give, okay, one, two. It's the upside of this party, you have a lot of healing resources floating around. (laughs) Four, I'm gonna switch this one out. Okay, so Achilles is going to get Sixteen hit points back. Uh, yeah, because the bonus damage damage doesn't add, so you get the forty ten. Forty plus, ten. Forty plus ten four. plus four. All right, so you get sixteen hit points back. You are at sixteen hit points, so you're no longer dying, but you now have the wounded one condition. Okay, what that means is that if you go down again, you will. Instead of going from wounded one, you'll immediately jump to wounded two. If it's a crit, it'll immediately jump you to wounded three. And then from there? Wounded four is dead. Okay. (sighs) 16 hit points. So, Tario, you cast Inspire Inspire Courage. Inspire Courage and then then Soothe at fourth level. Okay. So, uh, you now have 16 hit points. And the bleeding stops. So, there's that. (laughs) Oh my god. So, um, you would normally go next, but because you fell unconscious, your initiative shifts to right before the thing that knocked you unconscious, which was um, lucky. Correct. You did hold your turn. If you'd like to insert, you can now. You will now go after Toriel. Okay. Um. So, you're like 60, 65 feet away. I'm 60 feet away. Yeah, it was around there. It was like 15 feet plus 25 plus 25. So yeah, you're 65 feet away. Okay. Um, can't do anything with this distance, but searing light. Okay. So 120 feet. Unlucky. Okay. My last action will be to be 10 feet forward, but. Twenty-eight. Can I spend my hero point to reroll now? Yeah. Gonna do it. All right. Oh, 30. Hit. Oh. <laughs> if he's a fiend, he's gonna take some extra damage. I'm gonna take borrow this. Is he considered he a, fiend? a fiend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? This is bad, but it's fine. <sighs> it's bad, but it's fine. <laughs> 15 fire. And. T- Ah, 12, 34, Way 15, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 24 good damage. Take that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and I'm going to run 10 feet forward. No, 25 feet forward. I'm coming for you. Oh, oh my God, dude, this is so intense. <sighs> that was Linnaeus. Yep. The blast of light hits him and he's like, ah, ah, you and your goody. Shoot, shoot, God, no, that sucks. Liz. Good shot. Ah, No. 
No. Uh, no. Yeah, on those last ones, you're probably rolling for the fences, considering the armor class. No. You fire arrow after arrow at Lucky. He continues to bat them away. Bottom of the order. The fiends surge forward. And then something else happens. A wall of blinding flame <gasps> rises up out of the ground, filling the edges of the valley. Between you and the fiends. <gasps> Lucky's still on your side. But the rest have been cut off. Iculus, it is your turn. <gasps> Matt, yes! F in 20. Yay! <laughs> it's about time! It's about time! <laughs> Roll damage. Take him out. Six. Times two. Times two, so 12. Buddy. Plus 15. because it's silver. The body of Lucky crumbles, <gasps> falling into shadowy broken ash. His chains rot away and rust before your eyes. And all that is left is that face staring at you, leering as he sinks back into the shadow from whence he was summoned. <gasps> You're alone on this side of this blazing curtain of flame. Run. Run. What do you do? Run. Run to the church. Run. I'm assuming you pick up your sword. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Run. I'm assuming you, you pick up and you, you, you are bolting. Mm -hmm. As we're running, I'm taking- Sword in one hand, glaive in the other. Just... Taking the chains out, putting- <laughs> Don't the run, which are weapons! Just so the chains are out while we're I'm running. Cheating. Okay, the chain is very long. Is anyone going to help you? Helping. Yeah. yeah, we're all helping. Yeah. Just carry it together. Car like the, the, the like rope the, in like the, the place, but with the <laughs> chain. So you are all cutting yourself. <laughs> you are being baptized in pain. Don't well, put it like that. This is that's the way. The that's what Saren Ray said. Mm -hmm. As you race to the border, the edge there, you finally are just, you know, a, f a, a short distance from the church. You're not, you're not there yet. The church wasn't right on the border. It was still a ways away. But you have reached that point where finally the light is with you. You have reached the edge of Nadal. Looking back at you, the flames still burn. You see the orbs occasionally rise up above it and then fade back away, rise, rising back behind this curtain of blazing white fire. As you race forward out into the light, the first rays of dawn break over the horizon. One by one, the links of the chain begin to melt. Dawn has come. The Solren daggers one by one rust and fall away. With each chain link breaking, you can hear a strange, otherworldly sigh as the souls leave this place and return to their just reward. Say one last goodbye to your father. He is going home. That one last dagger is holding in your hand as the others melt away. Iculus looks into the dagger and he can see his father. I miss you so much. <laughs> I never had a chance to say goodbye. <laughs> the link of the chain begins to dissolve. But you're free now. <laughs> you're free to go home. <laughs> you hug the dagger close to you. And you can feel it rust 
away to nothing. You hear your father's voice one last time, a gentle sigh. And when you open up your hands, in them is a complete and intact gold rose pendant. This takes the hand. You walk away from that darkened place, your hope renewed. Behind you, the burning curtain of flame still flickers far off in the distance. As you make your way up to the ancient crumbling church of Sarenrae, a lone figure steps out of the church. He's a pale nobleman. And he steps forward, his overcoat open, the ruffle. As he does so, he looks kind of nervous as he pulls at it. And uh, he kind of unbuttons his coat to be less formal. And he looks at you and there, around his neck, you see the symbol, golden symbol of Serenray. And he looks to you, all of you, with a kind of almost uncomfortable gait. And he says, I do not think they will be bothering us. And the flames surge and burst. Who are you? He looks to you. My precious Adelina. I've been looking for you for so long, daughter. I need your help. What? Our sire is looking for us. And he has your mother. <gasps> what? But that is a tale for another adventure. What? I want to thank you all for watching this season of Knights of Everflame. Oh. If you want to learn more about this story, the characters, or the Pathfinder game, please visit knightsofeverflame.com. There you can find a synopsis of our previous episodes, stats for all of the characters, and some Knights of Everflame gear to deck you out for your next adventure. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>